show. show. RTM podcast show. To the world and the girl. And Young girl. Spree, Queen Ice Cream. How you mean? In Northwest London, born and raised In Kilburn is where she spent most of her days Chilling out, matching, relaxing, all queening Then her and Mafiella did start diva twinning And young spray well, I was up to no good Always making trouble in the neighbourhood Did a one liquor rubs and the judge didn't care He said I'm sending you to prison right now for two years I blew my mama kissing then when I saw tears Her face showed the limit of the place she could be If anything I could say the sentence weren't fair But I thought, nah forget it, your mom had no fear have no fear, mama. I know I'm only 16, but I'm built for this. Built for this. Huh. That's what Yo, I, I pulled up to the jail around 7 or 8 and I yelled to the sweatbox. Yo, fam, link you later. Walk up to Felton, I was finally here. Yeah. They took me to Swallow and it started from there. That's where it all started, man. You're just like me, I'm just like you. I was a bad you too. Bad you too. But you could change, man. You can change, have faith, have faith. R-T-M. 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 We did a more. Welcome to the RTM Podcast Show, exclusive, you know. You know we had to come straight to the block yeah, man. <laughs> for this one, because it's proper flowers, you get what I'm saying? Kew Garden flowers, you get what Real I'm saying? Real flowers, yeah? Proper, legendary settings, you get me? Big Bad Spray, come guy mad I'm even forgetting. <laughs> Big Bad Spray, Young Spray, here with my co-host. Queen, Queen Ice Cream, I'm not sure if you can air her properly yet, but that's Brizzavelli's fault. <laughs> Straight away, no delay, big up Briz, but today we've got a special guest today, a real pioneer in this team, um, foundation. Foundation. Foundation man. after foundation. the foundation, you, you get what I'm saying? As far as, um, he doesn't even need no introduction, car you already know, you get what I'm saying? But Mega Man. Let me sit to the so side, solid. let me sit to the side today, you know what I mean? CEO. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So solid. All of that. CEO. You know what I mean? Started this whole thing, brought down the, the, brought down the door, then showed the streets there's another you hustle. You understand? Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, so 
we had to come to the block. We've got some cutaways, so you're gonna see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's still he's still on his ends, man, and that's that's that just test that that goes a lot. That goes just you know, me, that goes far. Wait, wait, wait. That's, let's get let's let's get that right. I You're still, still able to come on the ends. Yeah. Why for that? Freely. Yeah. Why for that? I'm, free, I'm still able mm. to appear on the yeah, ends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not come on the ends. Yeah, yeah. Why, why for that? that? Yeah, I already wired my thought. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so boom. Megs. Nah, no, but. Nah, respect. Enough respect though, always, man. Always, always, brother. I always, know Megs always, don't always, like always. talking to no one. You get what I'm saying? I there's, know. there's not much people I like speaking to, man. Yeah, not really. Not everybody really. has agendas, you know what I mean? Yeah, not really in the chat. It's but you know me. what? Really and truly, I should have, I should have stepped up and represented for you time ago because you've been kind of close to man's organisation and the way how we just set up our thing like early hours, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, come on, man. But you know, you have to From just the whole North Star thing yeah, and you yeah. know TMD and we're gonna get into Wes that. and Buckhead and you know yeah, Stitcher yeah. and C and you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. All of the man them, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, nah, it's only right, Should have right, been in there from early, but there's nothing better than that. No, right but we had, to leave, we had to leave it a gap, you get me? Yeah, Remember, yeah, you yeah. done it, you know what I mean? With the other guy, we had to leave it a gap. No, nah, no, nah, you know what, respect for... <laughs> yeah. I spray, no, 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 listen, 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 listen. You get what I'm saying? On a grown man okay, thing... Okay, let's do it. On a grown man thing, this is how we're going to nah, do nah, it. No, no, you done a link, okay, Res let's respe do it. Respectfully, mm. yeah, so we had that to leave had to happen. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why that had to happen, because we're coming of an age where we have to show people exactly what it is and not what they thought it was. Mm. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Mm. So that conversation that me and him had was a very constructive and eye-opening conversation. That done a lot for East, South, North and West, bro. So You made him, you made him drink beer water still. Well, stop that, man. No. We're not going to do that. <laughs> no, no, We're not right, going to cool, do cool, that. Cool, 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 cool. I forgot. Car, respect I forgot to all Megan. of them. <laughs> I, know, I know one or two yeah. of them, you know I what I mean, he's might, he's a, might be a bit funny online and a little bit disrespectful but we're so grown we ain't even got to think and hold that against anybody you know what i mean mm. but apart from that salute to the sensible ones mm -hmm. you know what i mean and sometimes like, uh, it's the it's the bad ones and the mouthy ones that make the sensible ones kind of want to distance themselves mm. and it's the bad ones that kind of disrespect the sensible ones that end up not actually being on board when the sensible ones get up you understand mm. what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so you got to salute every ends man salute them salute every ends that had to happen still it didn't have to happen, but it happened. You get what I'm saying? It, it didn't have to happen. 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 Yeah, that's what, you know what? They I'm from me. South London, I'm not from yeah, North, bro. Yeah, but I'm, I'm from Wolfram, so. I'm from Wolfram, Cool, you're from East. But I'm from North, I'm not from someone, North. Someone actually asked people me that. People had to understand what happened because sometimes, yeah, there's conversations that people had on the streets like, you man were around, man, for certain reasons and we needed man and all of that. No, bro. Like, let's set the record straight, bro. We're from South West London. You understand mm. what I'm saying? None mm. of us, are, most of us weren't the baddest, but we were the bravest, we had more heart than enough, man, and we had to circle a lot of people in their time. But what I'm saying is that man didn't, man, man's not involved in you lot's thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came across because we bucked up in Iron Apple Cyprus. Mm. Yeah? We had a mutual understanding. Certain people, like, you see when Bucket was going through a situation with security, certain of his own man left him. Mm. And that's facts. No disrespect to man them or nobody, but certain man left him. And I was there standing by his side, making sure that he was Chris. You get me? Mm. For the whole time he was on the island. I mean him gelled well. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So big up his sister, big up his nephew and everybody. You know what I mean? Big up his kids. Yeah, big up and Linda, that, But when that gelling happened, there was another bond. And the first person I met out of um, you lot properly was Stitcher. Mm. You get me? And then mm. after Stitcher, I met C. And then I came to... North London, sat down in an apartment. But the, the apartment that I went into North London was Buki blood. Mm. I don't think anybody lived there. But me and, me and Morgan went up there, free had up a conversation. Morgan, free, up, free, up, free, up. free up my brother Morgan, you get me? We're going to get go into on, that conversation on, as well, yeah? yeah? Mm. Your family, I beg you step round, step round that, yeah? Yeah, respect G. So we had a conversation and I kind of looked at, looked at the man and I said, rah. I looked at the man and said, you lot are on badness. You lot got so I didn't know about, about North London man's reputation. Brixton yeah. guys might have knew about it. Junction boys, I did not know about no one's reputation. I was meeting them for the first time in Cyprus, hearing all the madness and cool. But when I heard their conversation, I said, yo, you don't need to make a business. You know what I mean? You don't need to do something with this blood because the badness ain't, ain't just about being bad. You don't got to think further than that. Exactly. So take the, that, that little gangster that you have or the reputation you have and create a business out of it 
and you can actually penetrate the world in a different mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my motto was, if you ain't got a business, you can't roll with me. Because you got to have a company, you got to have some sort of thing that... And then, yeah, C1 was the one that took to it the most out of everybody. Mm. He's the... He's the more calculated gangster, I would say, out of the set at that time. Yeah. Yeah, he knew that you can do the road thing, but boy, I could do business as well and become a star and rap and rumba claw. Like, he had the vision. The, he had the vision and he still got the vision up to this day. And even like he says, Megs, like if he didn't show me certain things, I didn't save his life by standing by his side and holding a strap and being down for him. I saved his life by giving him information. Mm. And that's another reason why I can step into my area forever and my kids can step into it forever because it ain't about trying to be as bad as they are. It's about giving them information to uplift yeah. them out of the situation they're in. And that's what I've done. So that's what I'm saying, bro. I weren't involved in the man them's thing, but while I was around the man them, mm. I was down for whatever they were down for. You know what I mean? Right, cool. That still didn't need to happen. Because you know why? They asked me this, I think in Take Risks, I think it's take risk. They said, oh, would I sit down with Tricky? Yeah. I said, why? Why? Do you think I should? You're not thinking. No, but I'm saying, do you think I should? Not you. No, but on a, they are... Not you, not you. Okay, okay. Not you. Okay, okay. Not you. No, maybe, but maybe saying... a Wes. No, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe that a cool. stitcher, maybe a C, maybe a couple other men, but not you. I was just thinking. It's, it's not your place. It's not your place to even think to be sitting down with any one of them. It's their, just, no, it's their place to make that decision. No, but I'm just saying, why? But my situation, the reason why I sat down with, with because it was needed, because people had a different mindset of who I am. Like I say, bro, mm. I'm a cool you. I didn't grow up, none of my family, well, that I know of, were deep in the streets, mm -hmm. done holy for badness. My family had companies. They're multi-millionaires in Jamaica. They're they were multi-millionaires in Grenada. Yeah. What am I doing in the streets of London? trying to play bad boy, not running companies, not doing business. You know what, yeah? So I had a, I had a duty to let people know who I am because there's enough men around me that look on me like the bad man that I'm standing next to. They look <laughs> on me like the dysfunctional people that I'm standing next hey, to. Sometimes... Hey, that's my name. That's I'm, my I'm name. not saying you. That's my I'm name. not saying C, I'm that's, not saying Wes, but I'm saying... Name. You changed it. You changed it from gangster or bad man. I was cool with that one, the first one. This bad man changing from bad man to dysfunctional. That's worse than Justin. Bro. You know what it is? When you're a bad man, you are That's kind worse of dysfunctional. Than Justin, he no, on, a real, than... on a real note, <laughs> no. when, you, when you're just about badness in mm. the streets, I'd rather you, that than are, dysfunctional, you are part and parcel dysfunctional, bro. Can we start, can it's we... an emotional lack of intelligence, bro. Can we use and the most, bad man thing, bro? And most bad boys, yeah, are not intelligent, bro. Can we use the bad boys thing instead of dysfunctional? No, I don't care, bro. I'm here now. I'm, I talk... <laughs> I can talk worse than, than how yeah. you're speaking. Bro, no, but, all right, cool. Most Big bad up. boys are very dysfunctional, mm. yeah? A few of them are very illiterate, uh, yeah? And yeah. they use their badness. And the reason why they had the anger is because of those issues. Mm. Because they weren't intelligent enough to be emotionally stable and know how to react better than how they did. Do you know what, yeah? We're going to bring mean? it back, though. Cool, we man. need to know... Let's bring it back. ...how we even started. Before we get even into no, that, yeah, no, we've we got to bring to it back we, still. We, we need to know how we even got there. Do you get what I'm trying to say? We want to know about Mega, because this is your day. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Cool. So, the flowers, so we want to know like where you was born. My G, come, come on. <laughs> My G, you yeah, saying it's you good? Yeah, come on, bro. Yeah? <laughs> Ross yeah. Clark! Yeah, Man then putting on size on me. All right, all right, all right. Look, come on, bro. started the thing yeah. still, so yeah. Yeah, say no more, bro. There yeah, you see we're outside, you get yeah? me? Big H. Enough people say they're outside, but they're inside, the party's outside. Yeah, yeah, come on. We're so outside. Born now. Obviously, so where was you born? Right here? Yeah, born, um, no, I was born Lambeth, you know, St. Thomas's Hospital, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. St. Thomas's Hospital, man, so that's Lambeth, so... Yeah, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you was born in St. George's, that's the Wandsworth Borough. I was born in St. Thomas's, so that's, yeah. that's Lambeth, bro. And where did you grow up, right here? Grew up in Junction, yeah, but... Oh. Mm. Yeah. We're actually going to go to a, a few of these spots what he mentions yeah. we're gonna go to and we're gonna have a little there's like there's like six to seven different areas in the Wandsworth borough there's like 16 17 plus estates in the Wandsworth borough mm. and everyone's cool with each other yeah you know what i mean so if we do get time today i'll take you around to most of the estates we're gonna and we're just gonna, get a little quick little we're gonna go around you get me we're yeah, gonna yeah, go yeah, around yeah, you yeah, get yeah. me car 
We have to make this one special. It's just one of the places in, 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 in South West London that is actually like that. I would say the whole of London mm. that is actually like that. People are beefing from road to road, estate to estate, in every territory that you could name. Yeah. But over here, that beef is like 90% cool. Everyone's 90% cool, 10% mm. internal problems. You yeah. know what I mean? So we're kind of As Christmas. we saw earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you yeah, saw, saw earlier, earlier, you get what I'm saying? But the young buck, you get me? Big up, big up my GK. Well, we're going to speak about K a little later as well. Yeah, man, but you get me? Now, it's good to see the elder them on the corner ready to distinguish any possible possible fire. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm glad I was here because I could have went left still. So, primary school? Yeah, primary school. What was that like? Primary school was cool, but it was hard, man, because I grew up with my grandparents, in it, so... I didn't really have the things that I wanted to have in primary school. I had plaits in my head. Mm. When the plaits come out of my head, Gally, Gally used to have to comb my head. I was, yeah. my lack of confidence, mm -hmm. you get me? I wasn't that confident. I had holes in my trainers in school certain times. Most, most kids don't even know about That's having right. holes in your yeah. trainers and holes in your socks and them thing there. So Imagine. I had a different upbringing. That's just facts, yeah. well, you know what I mean? And you know what it is? It wasn't like my parents didn't have but I didn't take care of my things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can go, you should, you go to school just like that. Yeah. And you know them raw Jamaican grandmas. Yeah. If you can go, you should, you go to school just like that. Mm -hmm. And they would make me go to school <laughs> just <laughs> like that. So I had to mind how I was playing football and mm. playing around, you know what I mean, at school and that otherwise. Boy, I weren't getting a new pair of shoes until the next month, to this next payday. I was cool at school, man. I was very, um, I had long hair in it. I was cool at sports, you know what I mean? I was like the third to second fastest, third to second strongest. Outside of the, the geeks in school that were strong, but didn't know how to use their strength, you know what I mean? There's beer, there's beer Africans and white youths in school that were, and Asian youths in school that look firm, but they really didn't have the heart. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they could beat man up, but, they didn't really... No, you're, 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 you're a bad man. You see you? Come back around again. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> and you... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should have put some two little things there. You have to put something in the path, man. We're going to have to put one. Let people know to go up. around. You get me? Sorry, Mumsy, we're just filming, you know. Now, make Mummy go to you. Make Mummy go to you. Go to you, go to you, go to you, go to you, go to you. No, it's fine, Mummy, man. Love you, yeah? I can't believe you unpatterned Mummy. <laughs> no, elders, hey. elders know the pattern still. Hey, the young ones have to buy the young ones, man. Where this guy, man? But yeah, yeah, primary school was cool. Um, it's, it's, the, it's your first time in actually stepping out the yard properly and thinking that you're somebody in school and learning the ropes and kicking football and you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, primary school, school, Falconbrook, man. It's literally like two steps over there. I swear Swiss, Swiss was telling us about Falconbrook yeah, still. Yeah. Big up Swiss, yeah. Yeah, Falconbrook, man. Enough of us went there, me, Shabs, you, Ben, he's an agent now. You know what I mean? Godfather to my son. Uh, you get me? You say got, everyone just linked up from family. primary school. Everyone linked up from primary school. G-Man from Soul Solid. Bomba. You get me, Matt passed through there, Seth. Cage from 21 Seconds. All of us went there, man. There's enough girls as well, man. Big up Nicole, Sophia, Rochelle. Rochelle, I see Rochelle on France 24. Uh, yeah, the news. I was watching the news one time and said, yes, coming in live from France. Oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Rochelle's on the news. I was yes, like, yeah, yeah so I big like up that. Rochelle. Like AC Burrell as well, he's in LA. He was the one that produced Ride With Us and a couple Lisa Mafia tracks. So ride with us, ride, ride. Yeah, big in the game. Ride big with producer, us, ride, early. Ride, like, and then man, they were hey. tapped in school. They wasn't the most intelligent, mm. but the, the, the people that were like not forward in one area, they mm. were so forward in the next area. So he was mad talented basketball player as well. Mm. So yeah, man. So the way. transition from secondary school, did, did you go to the um, same secondary school as everyone? Well, I got into ADT, which was meant to be some new technology school. But true, my cousin didn't get into ADT. I weren't allowed to go to ADT. Oh, don't lie. You were like, yeah. mm. So we had, I had to stay with him. So I went to John Archer. What was that like? That was cool, man. First year in John Archer. That, that, that school was named after a black man, you know, John Archer. Why? I don't know, bro. <laughs> it's named after a black man. You know what? I maybe don't know right now, car. 
But you knew at the time. But yeah, I knew at the time. Mad, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was, he was, yeah, he was maybe a significant black person in the area at the time. Mm. They named the school after him. And then that school closed down, bro. Mm. What, while she was there? Yeah, so school closed down in school. my first year, so I had to move school. Where did you go then? Went to Ernest Bevan. Do you know why it closed down? They weren't really up to scratch, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They weren't up to scratch, really. What was your um, favourite subjects? Art and music. Mike, you see more, yeah? Yeah, art and music. Well, you can and, draw, um, yeah? Yeah, I could draw still. Do you still draw? Do you still draw? I can do anything I want to do, do you man. Draw, do you draw, Not do right you... now, no. Oh, OK. No. But I can do anything. I'm mega in it. I can do anything I put my mind to, but it's done. Mm. I can't. There's nothing I can't do, man. It's all but, yeah, I used to draw, man. But what happened, I'm a black youth growing up in school, mm. and the art teacher sent, me, sent us all home one time. Imagine the art teacher sent us all home one time and said, draw what's outside your window. Outside my window is a roof and bricks mm. with a little bit of sunset. Mm. I drew that, bro. Mm. He gave me a D. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know how much time and effort I put oh, into shit. the bricks and the roof <laughs> and the sunset? Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the ghetto. Yeah, I'm in the hood. Yeah. Hey, what did he give you? Oh, oh yeah, I didn't even. Read what did he give you? Hey, what did he give you? We're not gonna do that today. Now, what did he give you? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Now, what did he give you? What did he give you? What did he give you? He gave me the letter D. The letter, yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. Yeah. No, no, I forgot. I he gave me the letter D, yeah. No, that's a disrespect, though. But that's a disrespect because yeah. I put time and effort into the roof. What was his the reason? Attention for, to what, detail. Why did he, did, he why said did I he didn't give use you my that? imagination. Mm -mm. He gave me the letter D because I didn't <laughs> use my imagination. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, They're not cool. going to get no, into no, this, bro. Cool, cool. No, We're on the block today, bro. No, bro. But you made, you made me take, you made me I'm drink a Ray and that. Young ones, you, bro, made me, you made me drink Ray and that, you know. I have to make sure that you don't step <laughs> you made, out of line today, bro. You made me like. drink Ray and that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they want to tell me the man gave me what? Like, uh, the letter cool. D. Uh, so, mm. yeah, he gave me the letter D because <laughs> I didn't use my imagination. No, but that's fuckery, though. I was kind of vexed yeah. for that. You get me? And he from said there, you should have used your imagination. You know what? The way how I grew up, bro. But he told everyone to draw what's outside, outside their window. window. Yeah. He didn't say draw what's outside your window, what you imagine to be what outside What you imagine to be outside, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I was up, I, I grew up a very like, I would say like emotionally driven you, you get me? Mm. So like, if you dishearten me, or you lie to me and you don't tell me the truth, blood, I'll take that to heart. Mm. So I calculated all of that. Hold oh, up, you told me to draw outside my window. Mm. And the only one I'm drew outside my window, you're telling me I should have used my imagination. So you maybe waste <laughs> yeah, time drawing games. attention to detail, putting different shades on the brick, on the roof, bird shit on the roof, a pigeon there, the little mildew in the window across, across from me, all of that with the sunset, and gave me the letter D. All right, cool. Never again. I stopped drawing from there, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't draw again. And that's it. That's mad, though. Because, look, that was a talent. Yeah. That yeah, man just I left. I didn't draw again from What there. else was it? Art and what? Music. So I played, like, oh, the double still, bass. You still with the music? I played the saxophone. <laughs> the music. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Still came the through music. with the music still. Played drums, played steel pans. Mm. You get me? So did you take that for a while? Not instrument-wise. From but, No, but see, from secondary school, what... Um, what was your grades? Don't make sure you say the letter, though. My grades. Yeah. What was your grades? GCSEs. Fact, I got kicked out of secondary. Oh, you, so you never done GCSEs? I never got to that stage. All right. What year did you get kicked out? Of? When I was fifteen. Well, yeah, four. What for? What for? Yeah. yeah. Fighting. Yeah, when well, you come to my school, man, from Brixton, man, that used to come to my school, and just wanted to fight me outside the school. So me and him just had a brawl, man. I fucked him up as well, and then we, we took it all the way to the main road. His name's Chris, man. Tall. Then he must have licked me up with a stick as well, fam. Like, licked me up in my head and that with a stick. Mm -hmm. And we both got nicked. <laughs> yeah, nah, we're cool, we're cool, not going to go there today, No, 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 I forgot. I forgot anyway. It's Flowers Day, Yeah, yeah, nah, it's Flowers Day. You give people I'm... your flowers, No, but it's you. It's you. It's no, flowers, I swear, no, yeah. No I, won't, I swear, I swear, I came in. I swear down. Listen, before we go in, okay, I want to be serious, innit? This is a serious day. No, I'm baiting you up. No, I'm baiting him up. Because I wanted just to be serious. The man said hey, to me, I, said, I wanted to sit over there. I wanted him to, he you said, nah, what? you sit over there. Because if, you... but anyway. Where is he? Where is he? No. So, boom. 
I'm second make, I'm gonna so you got kicked kick, kick well. out why you had the fight with Chris tall Chris yeah the fight with Chris we both got we both got arrested and then yeah we weren't allowed to come a back free, to school a after free, it. yeah fighting I don't yeah. even know if it was a free yeah. but yeah fighting and that and that was it man we weren't allowed back in school again so, but I was we, 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 were, we was that type of school that used to go around and you know misbehave in other schools uh, like when we didn't come to school with, with, with food in our pocket we used to rush the two at school. Mm. You get me? Take the dinner, take the food, uh, take the dinner tickets, have rolls of dinner tickets and sell like... Enough men went to my school. Brixton man, Tooting man, Stretton man and Junction man. We all went to the same school. So at certain years, we just used to... What man, what, you ain't giving us no food? Mm. You're mad, rush the till. Mm. <laughs> 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 it was kind of crazy. We mm. were at school those times, it was kind of mad, but... We were together in school, like outside school, we were separate. What music was man listening to in school? R&B, you know, mm. hip hop, ragga, them days as well. Definitely. No, you know what? <laughs> Forget R&B and hip hop, ragga. Yeah, no, no, I can't remember nineties. Yeah, straight, straight ragga, straight yeah. ragga. We yeah. were all little that. sound boys and yeah. trying to be. I was new to the sound boy team yeah. more than more than most men. Remember the sound tapes and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nasty <laughs> love, bodyguard, mm. all of that. But yeah, man. Um, you remember Adonai? Remember I tried to tell man they, they don't they think. Trying to say they don't know about Adonai. Don't you remember Adonai? No. <laughs> you remember Adonai? You don't know about Adonai? No. no. Yeah, them big sound there. No, them big sound there. Yeah, yeah. Stone Love, Bodyguard, Adonai. Kilimanjaro. Adonai, yeah, yeah. Adonai. You get me? All of them sound there. Yeah, Renaissance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on. Man. That's a little bit later yeah, though. Oldie. Yeah, yeah. Stone Love. Oldie. Younger than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What, you're 10 years? Yeah. You're 10 no, years no younger? Four years? I don't know. Yeah, you're late 30s, yeah? I don't know. Yeah, late 30s. You're late 30s. Just keep it there. Yeah, you're younger than me, Just man. Just keep it there. So, yeah, yeah you're, 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 you're in the, 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 the old new school. Just keep it there. But, yeah, Kilimanjaro, Adonai. Yeah, Ricky I'm so Trooper. new school, he doesn't know about Adonai, but in the comments, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but I trust me. I'm saying it right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying it right. Adonai. You get what I'm saying? Trust me. Right. Big sound. Yeah, you must be saying it yeah, right. Yeah, no, big sound, big sound, big sound. So yeah. But um so, so Yo, she's got mad. <laughs> I was in a sound called Younger Kilowatt. Mad. I was in a sound called Younger Kilowatt. Mm. We weren't the baddest sound. But we had a six sound system called Older Kilowatt had a sound system. Me and Romeo used to play at Carnival. The best sounds on man's territory was like instructor. Um This is from secondary school. Ghetto vibes. This it's from secondary school, yeah. Ghetto vibes. Um nasty love. Um Couple sounds, man. Did Romy go to your secondary school? Nah, Romy, Romy went to Battersea Park Tech, man. They man, they stayed But you on lot the just ends. knew each other from like from before, from the soundboy state. thing. Me and Romy oh. was in the soundboy thing. Harvey was from a state called Mesa, so they were more into sports and that. Mm. Mm. They didn't really get into this side of things. Where did you lot used to bump into each other? Uh, you know, community centres, okay. like youth you know, centres and that. Holiday youth centres and that. See, yeah. yeah. Was community centres, mm. you know. Because that's, what, that's that. what that's what we were saying about the youth like centres. Football isn't it? teams and that, like mm. Byron, Glasgow, Uben. Mm -hmm. They were all footballers at the time. We used to play for York Gardens. Right now you're in York Gardens. York Gardens had a football team when we were young. Yeah. Byron's mum was the coach, so she made sure his son, her son was striker. <laughs> 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 you have, you have, you have any boxing clubs hey, listen, I'll tell you something, man. That's see, mine, you see, you know, see, Bear Man wanted to be a striker and it was mad. Yeah, because his mum was coach, she, he was striker. Mm. So he was built a certain way. Mm. You see, this area, yeah, this area is known for physical fight, fighting. Like physical, core training, boxing. Mm. There's enough man from maybe like Peckham and Brixton that grew up learning how to fight and box mm. from Clapham Junction, Battersea right, area. Right. And that's where they got their craft of actually fighting from from this area mm. you know what i mean and most people that most of the elders that migrated from the caribbean to brixton ended up moving to battersea and creating a little bit more than what they were able to create yeah. in those other areas you know what i mean mm. so where are we now this is battersea or junction this is ju like junctions like a throw stone right where here, is bro. this Battersea. This is Junction, bro. Oh, this is, that's what I said, this is, ba um, this is junction. junction. Junction is Battersea, Battersea is Junction. Okay, so you, what is this, like Tyson's ends, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Tyson, Chaos. Yeah, free up Chaos, Dean man. Dean White, Morgs. Gappy. 
Yeah, Gappy Dean. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't try and Dean white him off. No, uh, because no, I have, no, 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 he's trying I'm to, saying it he's in this to, age. Yeah, he's trying to do his I'm thing, saying yeah, it because every time I say Gappy, no one understands like mm. who I mean. Yeah, yeah. So when I say Dean White, they, they understand, understand yeah, like yeah, true stories. Yo, like true most men from my area, you see Megahead, Adrian, mm. who was the agent for Sterling. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, blood, like that's my that's 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 the block, bro. A man that's them from here. Yeah, and I say it in a sense because the way how he grew up. Well, go on. You good? Yeah, bless, bless, bless. Like, I say that because the way how we all grew up, we didn't grow up the same. Mm. Some people didn't have that privilege as a young person, but their older brother were crazy. And if their older brother was out at the time, certain people would have knew how to manage people a lot different. But I'm glad that that agent stepped into his chi, you know what I mean? Became an agent and actually secured one of the biggest football deals in history of football at the mm. time when he had Sterling, when he moved from Liverpool to Man, Man City. City. That was one of the biggest deals at the time for a black football player. And that's a, yes, bro, bless man. And, that, and that's a man that's from our ends. You mm. couldn't grow up in Battersea and not become something. You couldn't grow up in this area, this motorculture area, mm -hmm. and not become, want to become something. You get me? Mm. And I can't say majority of the man did, but minority of the man that did, done something real big. You know what I mean? So school time now. All right, cool. So he was listening to um, Raga. When did that, when that um, R&B, all of that, boom, school done. Did you think to go to college? I, done, I went to college a little bit, you know. I done an ele electrician course, but I was working. My dad had a building company mm. um, called Click, him and his brother. Like all of my uncles had a trade that had companies and all that stuff, accountancies and all that stuff. And that's mostly where I got my idea for business from. Mm. But um, I used to work with them from the age of seven. Mm. I knew how to wire up a whole house at the age of 10. Hmm. Like my uncle Leslie, he ended up owning a record shopping thing, but he's crazy. Yeah, big sister, he's, well. Leslie is a mm. psycho. Like he's just more street. He should have just stayed in the streets than do business because <laughs> he used to bad up the whole complex, the whole construction industry, he used to bad them up. But we was working on a, um, a new building, King's Cross. I think I was between 12 and 13. Mm. And I had to like wire up like 20 apartment buildings a day. Mm. So I had to wire from the sockets to the fuse board mm. and from the lighting to the fuse board. So when I was 12, 13, that's what I was doing as, as to get paid. So I was making like a good five, 600 pound a week just doing that, mm. you know what I mean, with my uncle. So yeah, I kind of knew business and all and of that from that, early. Yeah, had that mindset installed in you from early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean? I just didn't like getting my hands dirty, man. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? So flipping, how did you get into like the muse? Like, yeah. what made you think like, all right, cool, man's gonna do this MC and thing? Or did you? I was singing, man. I was singing, man. I used to oh, sing. Me, Keish. Oh yeah, from shit. Twenty one seconds. Yes, we said. We said he was in um. That too, they were gonna too get him. Too young. Nah. I was going to get in all the chaos, there, yeah, all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happened is like, we had a singing group from the age of like eight, right up to the age of like 13, 14. Mm. And like, um, yeah, we just used to um, sing, man. We used to do like community centers, like talent shows and stuff. I used to, I used to kind of want to be the leader of the singing group. Mm. Wake up in the morning, 200 push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Run around the block, open your lungs, you know what I mean? Let's all dress the same, let's all... You know what I mean? I was looking yeah. at certain things in a different way, man, so... Me, Seth, Shabs, Pierre, Swiss, Keish... Used to go up in the tower block, one of the tower blocks, and just... Just sing, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Gonna, are you going to sing for us today? No, no, I'm not really... <laughs> that's a why, innit? I'll tell you why. I'll tell, I, I tell you why. I'm not singing to you, but I'll sing to Cream, but not to you, bro. That's a why, innit? But, that's like, trying. what happened is that... <laughs> I, I grew hardened as a child. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, I don't know why you think like no, that, no, but You think gay, bro. You think gay. No, like, you think gay, bro. Why is your to mind me. always on that, to get to me, You think gay, you think gay, bro. Right, cool. You're not meant to think like that. Right, cool. If a man's speaking to you, bro, that's not cool. meant to be in your no, mind. Yeah, 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 if I know, a woman's speaking to you, I understand, bro. Yeah, cool. Anyway. Let me put... 
Not the hard life coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, you ain't funny, you know. You, no, are, man, you know I'm trying to be serious no, with him, but you can't, you no, know. No, but I swear, yeah. I swear, it's only because he just got on to me. Uh, you get me? He knows he got on to me. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. It was sing to Cube, right, innit? Cool. Right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> all right, cool. Don't make me laugh. Where's this idiot? Go on. Yeah, what happened, yeah? Mm. I grew up a little bit more disciplined and more, I had to grow up more, grow up more serious mm. than my cousin or my younger brother. Because I had to be responsible for a lot You're more the than that. Yeah. yeah. Not the oldest, Keisha's yeah. older than me, oh, okay. but by four months, but Keisha's to act younger than me. Oh. You mean the oldest out of your siblings? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the oldest out of my siblings, yeah. yeah. You always Apart from my sister. I've got one sister that's older than me. Mm. So, um. That's not you, No. Nah. Can't be. So, yeah. I kind of like um, had a bigger responsibility, man. Mm. Take care of my cousins, take care of my younger brothers, change nappies from early, be responsible for the yard. Mm. Even when you're like 10, 11 years old, you have to be in the yard with the kids by yourself while the parents go out and do whatever they're doing, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was one of those things, man. How so, was that? How did you feel? As, as going through school and secondary school. Sorry about this. You know we're outside, but Megs, how did it feel having all that responsibility? They're just gonna have to try and edit it out. You can edit that, ain't it? Now having having all that responsibility as a young youth, bro. Mm. I didn't I didn't see it as nothing. I didn't think I thought it was the norm. Mm. When you're in your environment, Creamia, you kind of think that it's the norm. You kind of think like, this is how black people are. Yeah, yeah, this is the response yeah. you got to be. you got to take care of your younger siblings. Mm -hmm. you got to look after your grandparents when you get older. you got to take care of your mum and dad. All of that. It's only when you grow up and you see like Asian people and oh, white there. people, oh, their parents go. taking care of them. Mm. And they ain't got to think about, oh, when they get rich, they've got to help their mum pay the bills. Mm. Huh? Hmm. Their dads have helped them to get rich. Their mums have, are paying their bills. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But well, it's only in the black Caribbean, Caribbean community or the or cert certain African communities, you'll find that we thought that we had to grow up to take care of everybody. Yeah. If you were the most fortunate one, you had to grow up to take care of everybody. Yeah. And I ain't saying I had to, but that's the that's mindset I you, grew with. Do you feel like our generation, yeah? Do you feel like our generation are more ambitious than like our parents' generation? Because I don't know if yeah, like, majority, a, lot, a lot majority, of them like, was cool with just settling. So. Majority. Like our parents was really, majority. A lot like, of our parents was just cool with just settling. No, like, they were cool with like, a job. They were cool got, with like, did I mean? Getting a house did I on mean? a mortgage, yeah, yeah. having a car, yeah. having a job. That was gold. With us, it's like, yeah. that we was gold. Every, everyone we wants to be with us. With like, us, getting a house with a mortgage and a car mm. and a job, that's not goals. Yeah. Yeah. A house and a car. That's not goals. When people say to me, I've got my house, I've got my car, I've got a job. Mm. You, that's not... Mm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I get it. I yeah, that's not goals, yeah. you know what I mean? That's not goals, that's kind of like mm. 1970s and all that. Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly what it is. Mm. So it's like, with us, I get it. So what happened... I, we I, grew I, up feeling got, like we, we got to look after our parents. Yeah. I, felt, I felt a little bit too cool to start singing after a while. Mm. You know what I mean? Was Going into age. secondary school with, with age, responsibility, the person I had to become to defend like a lot of people that couldn't look after themselves at school. Mm. There's enough bullies around school that I used to look at and be like, you're emotionally unstable today, man. You're, you're just weak, but you, <laughs> you can't take someone making fun of you. Mm. Or you can't take that someone looks a bit more free and mm. is a little bit more intelligent in class. Like you're the dumb guy in class, so you get angry with everybody and, oh, shut up. You don't want to fight them and all that. So that's what it was, man. I, I used to like take care of people who were a lot more vulnerable. You know what I mean? David Stewart's and Chris and my cousin Keish. He was bad, he was feisty. Mm. Keish used to run everyone in school, bro. Yeah. See, like how you are on the podcast? That's how Keish is. <laughs> that's bro. it. Like that's how it. you are on this podcast, that's how Keish is. Run everybody, blood. Like, make everyone feel like, you know, we were up to so solid. I used to walk into, I used to walk in. <laughs> I used to walk into the office certain times and man would just end up bussing up. And I'm thinking, why is everyone bussing up? Case said, look, yo, when Mega look, walks in and look at his head. 
<laughs> them ones. You know, like I used to have my afro out. Mm. I used to look at me, think she's a crisp sweet Why boy, that? man. Butters. <laughs> Mad. That's how okay. she used to act with me, man. Mm. So, yeah, he was a funny youth, man. But I used to have to take care of his interest in the school, man. So I grew up a little bit more hardened after a while. And I felt like singing, singing wasn't really that cool. Especially from the UK. If you was an R&B singer from the States, yeah. you're cool. You can sing anything you want to sing, but UK-wise, nah. So then you turned that into what? MCN? Yeah, like I, before that, I got opportunities to go into Ultimate Chaos. Mm. I thought it was an opportunity for my crew, to, for my singing group to bust. How did you bus. get an opportunity? What? Pauline, Pauline, he was on the estate, Jade, he's PDS's um, younger brother. He was in. He got PDS. PDS is here. Yeah, so silly. He yeah. Work on a, a venture playground. Yeah. Because because uh, big up um, Nikki from Ultimate. He used to Chaos. come here. Because no, Nikki in Ultimate Chaos yeah. is from my area, yeah, North yeah, West yeah. London. Yeah. Yeah. And his mum used to manage me, his sis, my sister, and somebody okay. else in the girl group, and we shot a video. We came down here to the uh, to the adventure That's playground. That's the adventure playground there, right yeah, there. Yeah. One of them from Damage used to teach yeah, us the dance one. moves, and then we shot the um, the video there. Can you believe it? That adventure playground oh, don't right, be there. right there. Imagine that, that. adventure playground oh, right there gosh. is the adventure playground. That's it, yeah. And imagine I brought you to the ends today, yeah, right back there. here. Mm. So yeah, That's you're right. Still. Mm. So Pauline, her son, was Jade. He was in Ultimate Chaos. One of the guys from Ultimate Chaos either took ill or was leaving the group. Mm. Mm. I got some auditions to sing, and I thought it was an audition for my group to bus and, you know, mm -hmm. come through the game and mm -hmm. do what they need to do, mm -hmm. mm. get big. And then, um, yeah, it wasn't that. They wanted me to be in the group. Imagine that. So after all them spending that money, I kind of said, Dad, if it's not with my group, I don't want to do it. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? So my dad had to cuss them what on the phone. What did your dad think? He said, he said, boy, whatever choice, that, whatever choice you want to do, mm. I'm going to stand by it. Yeah. You hear me? What would you say to your son if he turned around? If your son was in the same position now, what would you? Yeah, I would have said. I would have said. Yeah, okay. I would have. I would have said that's the right decision. Okay. Yeah. Because Ultimate Chaos, they wasn't the most cool the singing group at the time. We had your Joe the Seas. You had a lot of groups those times. I, think they I, didn't, right, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. They were. They were good. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want, was right. No, they had Uche, I am Uche not your Casanova. That's a good tune. Oi! That's a good tune. That's the but Uche Bude, Uche, Casanova. Uche. Like, <laughs> like there was a tune, there were a couple of tunes which they sang, which I felt was a little bit. Bigger Aiden, man. I wouldn't yeah, have done that. Aiden. Even back then, we would have called a group, but we didn't look like a group. Mm. You had two Asian boys that looked separate from each other. Mm. One fat boy called Rudy, mm. yeah? <laughs> a guy called AC Burrell. Mine. You had a mixed race guy that had ginger hair. Mind you. A mixed race guy had ginger hair, and then you had two brothers, Swiss and, oh <laughs> Swiss and Mega, Swiss and Mega, that don't even look like brothers, <laughs> but they're brothers. It looked like an odd group. You couldn't package us and sell us. Like, <laughs> labels would have said, you sound good, but no. <laughs> like, <laughs> can we get someone that looks a bit more presentable? You know what I mean? And oh. some men were stubborn. Some men didn't want to leave the group. It's the ginger man. <laughs> some men didn't want to leave the group regardless on how they looked, on their shape or whatever. And no matter how much times really I told man to... Really Rudy really was getting mad. No matter how much time man, man wanted to take them around the block and do sit-ups and push-ups and that, it weren't changing man's figure, bro. Mm. So, yeah. So, boom, now. Nah. So, from you, from you... So, that's why... I turned that down. What did you do? Go back to the group? No, I didn't go back to the group. I went, I went jail for a bit and then... Oh, uh, what for? Um, I would say GBH. People say attempted murder because that was the case that the police tried to throw at you. Mm. But it was a GBH case in the end and I got not guilty for that. Okay. Like an elder, in my, an elder in my ends must have done something to my brother, punched my brother in the face or something, something, something like that. And then when I went to approach him, like he took it a little bit too far. Like I would have just fight, had a fight with him, but he took it a bit too far and whatever happened to him went a little bit too far, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but he lied about the situation, lied in court, lied about who done what to him and that, that's why I got not guilty. So, yeah. And that was your first time in prison? First time in Felton, man. How was that like? Felton was, Felton was cool, but it was an eye opener. It's the first time you're actually, you're actually seeing who are slightly like the people you don't like and do like, because there, there was Brixton, there was How Peckham. Was I was 16, 17. Oh, so yeah, juvenile, proper juvenile. Yeah, like 97, yeah. 16, 17. 
yeah? So 97 times I was in jail with all these different people from different areas that you'd hear about, and they just looked soft. <laughs> They just look, in those environments, you get, get to see who's, I tell you who really held himself up, Fat Shane yeah. from Brixton, he held himself up. And um, Keith held himself up. That's man from outside of my hands, but me, Chaos, another man, we just, we just fun at that time, man. It was a eye, real eye opener. Mm. And I saw a lot of people as, you know, not who they were made out, who, who they made themselves out to be on the streets. Mm. So when I came out of jail, I had a different spring in my step. Yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mum's still got the letter now. Yeah, when I said, yeah, I'm going to stop this, I'm going to build a crew and all of that sort of stuff. Mum's still got the letter now mm. of how I felt, yeah, when I first went jail and when I come out, watched boom, boom, boom. I had the dream in jail, turned around to Face and told Face, yo, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I see bare money and that, we're going to build a crew, all of that. So this was before, was thinking about building before going to trial. You thinking a musical crew or like I didn't even gang. know what it was, bro. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. But I knew flashing lights and money mm. wasn't no gang thing. Okay. It wasn't no gang thing. So it's more like a crew. To it was get more this like money. It was more like something. A crew to get music to get this money. Yeah, yeah. Now at that time, you see Bad Boy coming up with, you know, Biggie, yeah. Junior Mafia. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had No Limit doing their thing. So. Master P. Yeah, it kind of felt, kind of felt a lot like that. You hear me? Mm. Yeah. So. All right, so when you came out, how did you put your plan into action to get this crew? I didn't. I didn't put no plan into action, boy. I just thought, it was, I thought it was straight back to the norm. Just subconsciously, I felt I knew that I was in the streets to do something bigger than just being in the streets. That's what, that's what Joe made me realise that, yo, I've got the second chance. I'm in the streets. Let me do something a lot more constructive. You know what I mean? Mm. Some of us get caught up in street activity and forget that you're not here to be the biggest drug dealer. You're here to utilise that situation to be the biggest business person or the biggest entrepreneur. Or these are just these are just like teething skills. You know what I mean? For you to understand what's going on in the real world. And some of us just get caught up in the gang life and thinking that's the coolest side of it. As long as I'm a bad boy, I can get all the girls and all the money and all of that. But it's kind of short-lived if you don't put it into work on a bigger scale. It's kind of like um, failed achievement. So with me, I looked on it like, yeah, this is my time. But Mac, Mac came up to me and said, yo, Megs. No, Mac had the opportunity to go on Supreme FM. So he must have been emceeing on this station for a minute. PDS knew I was talented. He was with Mac. And then PDS drafted in me and Romeo. Mm. And then from there, the rest is history, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you I was I used to MC because I used to put on like community centre events from the age of like 13 up to like 15, yeah, 16, 17. You've been doing raves since he was 13, 14. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He's mega done his first rave right, when he was 13. Or yeah. Something. Yes, father. I used to like put on little community centre events. Just looking at the elders, looking at the elders in the ends, putting on their little shoe beans and that. You know what I mean? Like. I said, bro, where's our one? Exactly. Then I went to the same people and said, bro, how much is it to hire this community centre? I just put on events. I remember I booked to Nikki, Nikki Black Market and Stevie Hyper D to Jump. come down to a community centre and tear down the community centre. So like, yeah, I was doing that stuff and I, I, I even took it to West London. I done community events in like Emerald Centre. If everyone in West London know about Emerald Centre in Hammersmith, yeah, I done Emerald Centre and then I done one event in Latimer as well. Mm. Yeah, community centre in Latimer, but that was dead. <laughs> the ones in Emerald Centre were, were sick still. And um, in those times, us Battersea boys, we were travelling, us Junction boys, we were travelling. So we used to go to Southall, we used to go to Halsden. We used to, any time there was a like, you know, um, Stonebridge, what's that community centre in Stonebridge? Oh, that shut down. Nah, the, the other one, what's it called? What, Bridge Park. That was the, what's the community? Complex. Yeah, Bridge Park. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we, they tried to run us out of complex one time. <laughs> yeah, man had to come up there still <laughs> and, ca and catch some innocent ones off guard, allegedly. <laughs> so anyway, um, that when I was younger, bro, when I was younger, bro, I ain't saying the man's big age, man, it was so little and minute. But yeah, so yeah, we used to do events all over the place. And that's what kind of made PDS know 
that I was talented at MCing and, and holding the mic and confident. Mm. So when him and Matt got an opportunity to go on Supreme FM, he called me in and said, yeah, I want, I want Mega to come on. You know what I mean? All right. And you lot was dealing with... Is that the, then you lot end up teething out his things? Teething out his things, bro. We don't steal, bro. We don't steal, man. We don't steal. You lot cleaned that somewhere. No, we don't steal, man. No, no, no. I swear you cleaned that. What happened? What happened? Was it that one that you cleaned that? What happened? The guy from Supreme FM went AWOL and they was doing an event in um, Cloud9 called Garage Fever at the time. This is 98, 99. And they didn't have no money because tech went missing. So we were the guys up on the station with the money, with the champagne and all of that. Mm. So they said, yeah, Megs, invest in the, in the station, invest in the rave. You get me? Like we were one of, we came, we came on the station in 98 mm -hmm. and we were signed in 2000. Mm. So it's like within 24 months, within 12 months being on the station, we were one of the biggest crews on the station. Just the vibe and the atmosphere we brought to the station. And the station's in Acre Lane, Brixton. So we used to go there every Sunday, MC on the station. Now this is under the radar of most men in the streets, cause man them's still on Raga. Me a Raga Raga, hold on now. Me, you know what I mean? Still bashment out. So we're under the radar, people's thinking, what's this MC thing? Ah, oh, that's nothing man, that's dead. Enough people thought Garage or MC on the radio pirate station was some idiot thing. Little did they know the master plan was being kind of orchestrated behind our mindset, you know what I mean? So I went on there, Romeo came on there, we invested in the station. The Asian guy came back and said, fuck off you little mug. Mm. Fuck you think you are, you know what I mean? He kind of just tried to bad man up. I said, look, I'm gonna come back on Sunday and if I ain't got my money back, it is what it is, you know what I mean? Mm. Went back on the Sunday, they didn't have no money. Long, long story short, man just cleaned out the whole place. <laughs> you know I, mean? I made it a short story to begin with, but We've got a long story, you get what I'm saying? But man cleaned it out, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Cleaned out the place still. Uh, so boom. And then from there we set up Delight <laughs> FM, changed Garage Fever to Garage Delight, and the rest was history, yeah. And so, all right, cool. How was that? What you mean? Like, how did you feel? Like, I, like, felt, I felt like, it was justified, it was justified. No, but I'm, no, no, no. Um, like, in terms of, like, what was the plan now? Like, did you think, all right, cool, like, with, with like, you know, like you was planning in your head to start with this group where we're all right, so cool. Now you've got your own. So, so it was already in the, in the, in the move of things. Mm. We changed from SOS to So Solid on Supreme FM. Mm. We was oh, already before, in the, okay. yeah, before Delight. Okay. It's already in the groove of things. So it was So Solid presents Garage Delight. So Solid's Delight FM. Mm. So Solid Beats. So Solid Paper Money. You know what I mean? Like I went to my, Friend Carton, oh, who was. Did you get the name so solid, so we've been told. But yeah. I sat down in my. Well, well SOS. Matt called us SOS. There was a DJ called SOS on Upfront FM. He had a problem with it. I said, we're, we're bigger than that anyway. I went home to my nan's house, sat in my granddad's chair, came up with the name so solid, went back to the man them. I said, yo, let's call ourselves so solid. And from there on, I, tr I copyrighted the name. You know, back then I didn't know how to trademark. Mm. So I, so I created the logo and sent it back to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, didn't open the letter. Mm. So that was, that was a, another form of copywriting. Like yeah, even if you write lyrics, mm -hmm. you just write the lyrics, send it back to yourself and don't open the letter. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. And um, yeah, everything that we've done had So Solid Presents. So Solid Presents, So Solid Presents. So that's how I kept it. You mm. know what I mean? So when you look on all the Garage Delight flyers or the Light FM stuff, it was more main, mainly based off what Soul City was pushing. So Mr. C, he ran Garage Delight and the radio station, and me and G-Man ran, all right, Mr. me and Mr. C ran the raves. Mm -hmm. Mr. C ran the radio station with his brother Sponge okay. from Studio Classic. And then me and G-Man ran the label. But all this time, it wasn't really a proper we didn't have an office fully fledged yet. Mm. Having an office was me going around to distributors, knowing that I had to do invoices, knowing I had to do receipts, knowing I had to stack the record somewhere, stack the flyer somewhere. And no one really cared about that. So I kind of just went forward with my little shekels and got the office and of my own money and put the, you know, fax machine in there and 
telephone in there and after people started to see that it was beneficial doing that, that's when they started to believe a little bit more. You know what I mean? So. And who, who was like your top MCs them times? Steve Hyper D, um, Skibbity, no, obviously. Yeah. MC Depp. I meant in so solid though, but no, no, you do for some big MCs. Like who's like the top, the main so solid MCs them time? Like when you just me, just me, me and Romeo. Oh, it's just you and Romeo. Eh? Me and Romeo were the, were the two best MCs in so solid. Mac was shortly behind us, but we all had a had a certain vibe. How did it? How did it? Like who came first? That's his mad. That's a walk off. But uh, who started first in so solid? And how did it like Mac, joined and then Mac PDS. But there was bare of you, bro. Or was there bare of you? Yeah, the, Mac like, Mac PDS. Real so solid. Mac PDS. Then I came on board with an MC called Nitro. Nitro thought, you know what? I'm not gonna do this. Yeah, allegedly. I'm just gonna continue licking Megs. Mm. Yeah, meaning like, you know, computer sims and all that. Mm. Yeah. Enough man was into that, making grands. Radio station was a idiot thing to them. Mm. So he said, he said, F that, I'm going to keep doing the computer thing, running up in bare places, selling these things for grands. A man made a living of it, because there's certain men in the ends that had TTs before me. Mm. It's just that I made it more popular. Mm. That's what it was like, you know what I mean? So anyway, look, back again. Mm. Yeah, so I made it more popular. But um, yeah, then he left the station and then Romeo came on board. Mm. Then after Romeo, uh, Harvey popped in and then popped back out again. Mm. Then Asher came. Why did he pop in and pop back out? He had football in it, he had football going on, but he wasn't really gelling with how the way how we were MCing at the time. He's a sick football player as well, though, isn't he? Yeah, sick, man, sick. Come on, Liverpool. Sick, sick. Liverpool, I'm yeah. forgetting your quality, Come on, guys. of course, bro. Oh, yeah, it's the Liverpool thing, bro. You know the thing, bro. Yeah, come on, never walk alone. You know the thing, bro. Mm. So, yeah. All right, so, boom. So, what? I did, obviously, I remember back then, it was like a lot of pirate radio. Um, like, pirate radio sets. So, what did you prefer? The pirate radio sets or the actual live sets, like, raves? Like, what did you prefer? I preferred radio, man. Right yeah, because Raves didn't like us. We had to do our own Raves. Mm. Raves didn't really like us. They, like, Garage wasn't really an MC in genre yeah. at that time. It was more of a crowd pleaser thing at the time. Mm. It's only since when we came into the game, we made it more of a, right, let me hear a storytelling thing. Because us listening to Jungle, it was storytelling. Mm. When Skibber or Det touched the mic, they were storytelling. You get me? Stevie Hyper D touched the mic or Shabo, or anyone that didn't touch the mic. It was storytelling, yeah. So, when we came into it, it was a storytelling thing, but maybe it was a little bit more street, more like cool. You know what I mean? The way how we came about. And Garage wasn't really about that. Garage was just fun and light at the time. We just brought a different element to it. So was it like, obviously, I know with the grime and that, like, it's like bare MCs, like, spitting. How was, like, Garage, like? Garage is a little bit more, more, more thought about. Like, I think, I think that grime, grime came from Garage. Yeah. Just like how Funky came from Garage, Baseline came from Garage. Grime came from Garage because it was, like, underproduced material. It wasn't well-produced material. It didn't have singers on Garage, on, on grime. It was like manning from the soundboy thing that were making one or putting two, two, two sounds onto a module, making it repeat at a certain tempo and going mad. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> it was one of that. No, no, I like grime, but yeah, I, I, I would have loved grime to like. No, you like grime though, because if I just needed to, because you said you don't like grime just there. I like the earlier grime songs. <laughs> I like the earlier grime songs. I don't like the ones that are just, that are just like, not thought about. It's that, weird, weird, like them, like. Now nah, some of those lyrics, some of those lyrics, some of those. Ooh, ooh, right. like, now nah, every 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 time, every time an MC, every time an MC done that, trademark. It's weird, I rate. Weird. I rate. Ooh, like, like it's mad. Like, you have to rate it. It's you have crazy, to rate it. but no, you have to rate it. It's but I'm talking about the beats. To eat, like, or, no, the like, MC in the MC in. I'm not wronging no MC to be how they were, but I'm talking about the production, bro. Mm. The production was poor. 
So if you want to call it grime because it's a poor production, yeah, fine. Here, but Wiley boy. made the best grime beats. So don't, don't. Yeah, the best grime beats that could almost be classed as a garage beat. Yeah, don't. Made the best grime beats. I don't know anyone that made better grime than... Like, even Sir Spiral today, people say his beats are grime. His beats are garage. What are you talking about? Sir Spiral, though. Sir Spiral's beats are garage. Like, him using, like, my, my drum patterns and that mm. in, his, in his beats and that, like... That, that's garage, bro. I ain't really heard, but I know he does. He still represents. It's garage, bro. It's garage, whether there's a grime MC on it or not. It's garage, bro. The last, I think I heard the two with Prince T on it. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. But now today, people think like garages, Avrexes, flowery music spitting hard on it. Mm. Nah, man. I, I, I ain't heard a Wookiee sound sounding garage in years. I ain't heard a Master Steps or a DEA or a Soul Solid type garage beat in years. Yeah, what is what is getting producers garage now these days? Just flowery like, flowery garage with people wearing the A-Rex in the video singing or spitting their hardest bar. It's true. Like it's not. Yeah, for real. You know, what I mean? and if it's and if it's rough, they try to class it as grime. Yeah. And no, bro, no, 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 no. Let's get you know, it right. The thing is, Mango Garage and they're still, you know, anyway. They're still playing that era. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. it's the best era, man. It's the best era, man. Like, the thing about the garage scene that we've taken care of ourselves, like, just like how the, the house scene have taken care of themselves, mm. just like how the jungle and drum and bass scene have taken care of Even when we were signed into multi million pound deals, we were still performing at garage raves mm. for patents because we're taking care of our own circle, our own promoters. Our promoters are now, some of them are, multi-millionaires from promoting their brands you just see the brand garage nation go up and it's and it's a wrap yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. you understand what i'm saying kistory is trying to capitalize off it which they have Hi, over the years well, sidewinder mm -hmm. they they were on the ground thing a little bit but they know that they pattern, they, they garage they is the pattern you know what i mean and if you ain't got the headline garage act on or majority headline garage there That's right. do you know what i mean so yeah. we've taken care of our own We've got festival. They've grown from bars to festivals, and we're just killing it still, bro. Regardless whether we're signing deals or not, mm. every year, man, ain't even got to make music, bro. Mm. Like I remember, I, I saw one with you saying it, like, and it's facts, like, the way how I see music scene, yeah, people can handle it in two different ways. If you're in the music scene and you haven't made crazy money from it, but you're still doing music. You need to do music. That like you have to keep continue making crazy money to survive. Yeah. So you've got to keep making a fresh song. If you've been in music for time and you're multi, multi, you're up, you ain't got to do music anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Like when we came into the game and we done music, we made multi out of the music, yeah? Multi millions out of deals and stuff like that. But our songs are still making money today. Like year in, year out, the amount of turnover from maybe one or two songs, let alone the album, mm. is crazy, bruv. Cool, no, it doesn't stop. Like cool, the no, publishers and the label still have to call me to authorize everything that goes through the Soul Solid album. What was the break? And our percentage, and our percentage from, the, from, from what we earn from the music is more than what the labels earn today. What was the I would say over 75% in our favour than the labels and the publishers, so... What was the um, breakthrough like? What do you mean? Like, what was the breakthrough like? What, like, bust you lot, like, what was it? I went into studio and created, um, I produced was a beat oh called no. Oh No, yeah. Oh. I produced a beat called Oh was No, that man. that before the casualty tune? Yeah, 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 it was the first... Because what it was, when you come from the Soundboy... It was a big tune. Yeah, what it was, when you come from, <laughs> when you come from the Soundboy era, you always want to create something that's yours, you always want to make a special. That's what the Soundboy era taught us. If you're not playing something that no one else can't play, then you're not really a, the biggest DJ or the biggest flex. So I had the idea, went into studio, and also we was going to Coliseum. And you know what? I've seen so much man in South London online, but they're not really bigging up a lot of the elders. So, and a lot of the elders that have respect in other areas. Mm. So I'm going to big up this African Ghanaian, called, Ghanaian brother called Appy. 
Cool, no man. If enough man don't know Appy, mm. Appy was the man that had every single area selling for him. Mm. He was like, you know the Rick Ross, you know Snowfall? Allegedly. Yeah? He's passed away now. Oh, right. I don't even got allegedly. I could just say it and it's him because he's not going in jail for this. Mm. You get me? Appy was the biggest pusher. Yeah? From Peckham. Or they might even say New Cross or whatever, but from the biggest pusher. Yeah? Him won. Yeah? And when we when it came to college, he wasn't the bad man on it. He was the most respected guy that when you went to Coliseum, you could be from Brixton, Peckham, or Junction, or Streatham, or any area. If he's in the building, everyone's got champagne. Nobody can fight. Now everyone had most man had their mashes on them or the certain, most of the man had grievances, but they used to dance it off. <laughs> Blood! Man used to look at man like... <laughs> Bro, yeah, let me dash this away from. Bro, man used to bust two skank, keep it moving and even show their thing. Like... Yeah. And do a little wiggle and, and, and bop off again. Yeah. It was so, now I look back, it was so humorous to me, blood. I have to <laughs> laugh, blood. If man, man, man them that was in Collie those times, every bad man that was in Collie those times, you know what I'm on about. You know what I'm, and cocaine was filling the air. Bad boys used to smoke cocaine like it was Ross Clark cigarette. Uh, uh, I don't care, no, bro. No, no, you know it wasn't a flex. Me off, they got me off as the guy. I know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was never a flex. The guy. But bro, that distench the air, blood. I don't even understand. Why, why, did, why did the man them even smoke yeah, coke the entire time? Was it even coke still? It was crack still? Yeah, but what was the... What was, what, right, see? That's coke. how you know I don't know what I'm yeah, talking about. So, 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 so... We can, we can say coke. But why did the man them smoke if crack like that? What was the taste? Better. What was the taste about Let's it? keep it back to coke. No, Let's what was the taste? Better. What was the taste about it? You told me. I don't know, fam. I've never smoked it. I don't know. No, you said you smoked it before, bro. It's a sweet one, black. No, but what, what was it? What was the taste? Sweet. What was the taste? Sweet. What type of sweet, though? Sweet. All right, cool. Calm down. No, what type of sweet? What type of sweet? Nang sweet. What do you mean? Nang sweet. Just no, what do you mean, though, fam? I don't get Nang. it. Nang. They know what I mean. Everyone knows no, what I mean. Fam. I don't. You Nang say everyone, sweet. but everyone didn't smoke everyone crack those times. Hey, look, Breezy's laughing like he's. No, everyone didn't Nang. smoke crack, fam. No, but he's laughing. Most, like most Nang. man that most man. He's been Nang still. Most man, yeah. Mm. Most man. From the ends. There's definitely man in, in here that's been nice. Right, yeah, bud, right, it's bud. You can, bud, look, you can see you can... if you want. <laughs> there's I'll tell you what. Someone has been let's, let's stop for a sec. Let, 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 let me break it down no, for no, a second. No, no. Let me break it down for a second. Someone, someone's been nice. You see the young ones? Oh, you see the young ones in this era, not blood? The young ones. You see the young ones in this era, blood? That's not a flex. Mm. It's not a flex in our era, it's, but. It was, it was not a flex in no era. But you had one or two men that maybe went left because they were selling it. They thought it was a bad man thing or whatever. And then the elders that went jail, maybe went OTT with it oh, and come out looking like it. You could tell it on their face. But I have to ask you, bro, what was it? Because I know smoking weed, there was a taste. There was a flavor to Thai, red beard, I told you sweet. skunk. Sweet. I told you. What's sweet? What's sweet? What's sweet? What's sweet? Sweet. Like what type of sweet? Like Harry Bowls? You're getting mad. Harry Bowls, Starburst. Starburst. What? Fruit pastels? Starburst, fruit pastels, all of that. So smoking fruit saying? pastels? Everything. You get what I'm saying? But it was nang. All right. So back in those times here in Coliseum, used to feel the air of it. But Appy was a man that made enough man manners themselves in the race because Garage was a was a rave that was a was a was a a scene where you just wanted to come for the good times. You didn't really want no badness in there or fights in there or nothing like that. And even the man that used to hold the door, Freddie Daly, um, Tyson, not Junction Tyson, the other Tyson. You get me? Um, so much different man that used to hold doors. There was a lot of manners that used to happen in Coliseum and Bagley's and Adrenaline Village and, you know, certain of them raves there. Mm. But there was dances that the man them done that they weren't making music to, bro. Mm. There were some real skanks <laughs> that the man them done, which I don't know, I don't know, the producers weren't just making songs to it. So, bro, I was in my yard making Oh No Fam, and I was skanking to how I wanted the beat to be. Imagine that. 
I remember the raves of how all of us used to be in the raves and do a certain dance. Boom, 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 boom. And, and skank and, you know what I mean? Like, it was a different, people used to do the cheesy one, but the mandem used to do a different one. You know what I mean? And, and skank it and, and that's how I made the beat because I, because I looked at how we used to dance and said, no, nah, we need to make music for the way we dance. You get me? And that's how Ono came about. And that was the first tune that I gave to PDS on dub plate. And that's what kind of blew, blew up the whole, the whole vibe. Mm. It's like when we're in the rave, unless you're going to play a song to the way how us man dance, we don't want to hear, we don't want to hear the rest of the rave. You know what I mean? So DJ started to take the song, take the beats, and then we just started to make more and more beats like that. And then the soul so the sound was created from there. Looking how us black people wanted to dance, how we done brought the coolness to garage and the street shit to garage. And that was it, man. Did you get a deal for that one? Run the thing. Yeah, so I got a single deal for that. And again, blood, I just didn't feel right. I just did, I just said, this isn't about me, it's about my crew. Mm. Yeah. We was making like, we were selling like 10, 30,000 units off of white labels before getting signed. Mm. Me and Carton, Carton had a little bit more money than me them times, but we had to put like 15 grand into Garage Delight to put up on per rave. Oh, for real? Yeah, 15 grand, you had to pay everybody, you had to pay for the venue, seven bags plus, pay for flyers, teletext, posters, all of that sort of stuff. And we would make 25K, 35K off of a rave. So like, we're doubling up. This is, we're teenagers, we're 18, 19 years old. Mm. <laughs> and we're doubling up, Carton's younger than me, so he's 16, 17, and we're putting on the biggest garage raves. But our dads used to hold the door like Rusters, not my dad, but his dad and his brethren's and that. He used to hold the door, bomba clata, my son rear this, bomba. <laughs> so this is why we didn't get robbed. You know what I mean, in those times. So doing that and just bunning down, turning over so much money as young youths, when the labels came, they couldn't hand us more money. They had to hand us like a serious amount of money at that time. Yeah, it was mad. So I got the single deal and then I turned my single deal into the cruise deal. You know what I mean? And that's when the second, the second single for Soul Solid was 21 seconds. Because what happened was like, they saw a poster of Oh No billboards all over the UK and they saw me, Lisa and Romeo and the hood was vex. The hood was Vex, Battersea, Junction, Bear people like, what? Fuck this, what? What do you mean? There's Bear man in Soul so how come there's only you three with the, with the logo? Oh, and man was Vex. Internal, external, yeah, bro. Yeah. Mums, dads, everyone. <laughs> what, we got Bear vinyls, we got our own radio station, we got the biggest, one of the biggest garage raves going on at that time. And there's three man on TV, yeah. even though everyone's in the video on that, but the posters don't represent everyone. Mm. And then they're saying, who's this Lisa girl? Mm. Never seen her in her life, never heard her on radio station, but she's so solid. Who's she? Black gal in the ends were back. <laughs> what, you know what? You know, our certified gal in the ends, like, vex, like what? Is that what you like doing? Like, did it, did it? How did she get in the crew then? Yeah. Because she was going up with G-Man at the time. Lisa came into the crew because she was my son's mother's friend yeah get me jillian big up jillian yeah she's from brixton that was my summer friend lisa's from brixton so they they went through school having to take care of lisa's interest and if you was a light-skinned girl from brixton enough man used to wanna mm. yeah you're pretty come here and you know what i mean and if he wasn't strong on the internal people would want to take advantage of the prettiest girl around around mm -hmm. town so most pretty girls ended up not not becoming who they wanted to be because of a lot of street environments and stuff like that. And most of the dark skin gal them had to rough up and mm. dress a bit, mm. you know what I mean? Rude and rude gal up and them thing there to even cut through. And enough girls know what I'm talking about. So those times were different. Those times were techie techie. Enough man was smoking coke and, like you know what I mean? And it was, it was a techie techie time. <laughs> like that, fam. So to grow up in those areas was very touchy, especially if you didn't have a father figure in the house. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was difficult for them, but Jaleen introduced Lisa to, to G-Man. G-Man wasn't a man that I felt could get better girl anyway. Even though he had this physique and everything, he just wasn't maybe that confident. So when he bucked up on Lisa, it was like, yeah, man, this is me, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> so that was cool. And then when I wanted to sing her on the song, because I, my lyric is, it's just a little thing, the sentimental. I used to MC that on radio all the time. But when I made the song, I didn't want to go on the song doing that. Like Romeo spitting bars, and I have to do the, and I'm doing, it's just a little, nah, that's not happening on my first tune. So, <laughs> yeah, so I had to draw for Lisa. Bust there still. Yeah, underneath draw for Lisa and, yeah, and make that cut through, you get me? Mm. So that's how that come about, man. And then, um, yeah, everyone was vexed. So G, man, I, went, I remember after hearing that, I went to the label and said, look, we need the next song, we need as much people as on the song. Mm -hmm. And they was like, look, as long as you fit it within a certain amount of time, mm. you lot can do that. Imagine that. You get me? So uh, you got the idea for 21 seconds? seconds. G-Man kind of made up the idea, but I went back to them and said, look, we've got this amount of time to fit everyone in. Mm. So if, if man can fit everyone in on that amount of time, cool. And G-Man had a guy called Synth underneath his wing from, he was in Battersea that time. Yeah. And he was an African guy, like he is an African guy, just a producer and that. But the man that used to come to me with demos that used to sound so shit. Mm -mm. Like if you ever listen to, if you ever listen to Oh No. Hello. <laughs> your, brother's a, your brother's a bad boy. Yeah, he's no, come, 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 come. Oh. Follow your brother, man, follow your brother, man. <laughs> yeah. Like if you ever listen to to 21 seconds in its original format, mm. you would have made it a single, bro. Mm. You would have said, fuck that, I'm not, I'm not spitting on this. Mm. You know what I mean? But I had, I had a publishing deal and a label at the time, so I made everybody use the studio in, um, in West End, EMI Studios. Mm. And um, what would happen? Everybody would come and lay their vocals down, lay all the songs down, and then I will be left in the studio to, say, see to finish goes, it up yeah. with, the, with the engineer. You know what I mean? To make sure the beat sounded nice, the bass line was fatter, the drums were... I was kind of that person on most of So Solo Music. Was everyone happy where they came on the song? Where, where, you know what well, I'm it wasn't like that, you know. The original one, um, <coughs> Scat Lee was lost. Mm. The original version, Scat Lee's lost. But because me, Lisa and Romeo was on the single, mm -hmm. they said to keep the public interested, the label, you know how the labels are. Mm -hmm. Keep the there. public history. You, Maggie, you go first, put Lisa in the middle and Romeo at the end. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of had to reformat it. And, and it, it didn't worked. have a chorus. Keisha's verse was a verse. Mm -hmm. Keisha's part of the verse. And they said, nah, it needs a hook. Mm -hmm. So we just looked at Keisha's part and said, nah. That's, that's the hook. I got 21 seconds to go. Yeah. 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 That would have been mad if, that would have been you know, better as a chorus still. Better as a chorus, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So I said, look, that case is one, that's the chorus. And then bam, the rest is history. So 21 seconds was kind of formatted from us pleasing the hood and pleasing our fans mm -hmm. and letting everybody know that, all right, cool, we kind of promoted Soul Solid Crew like it was free people, we apologize. Here's the full crew. Yeah. But at the same time, like listening to the label and listening to the structure of how a song should be mm -hmm. and then formatting it in that way, instead of coming to your label and saying, this is a song, put it out and not allowing them to mm -hmm. change a verse or add someone to it and format it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and that's, yeah. that's why I feel, that's why I feel songs last so long. Like when we look at most hip hop songs from the state side, it wasn't just the rappers listening to themselves. 50 Cent's album, mm. you know what I mean? Um, Biggie Small's album, a lot of people's albums. It wasn't just the rappers listening to themselves and saying, put that out. It was them listening to the executive producer or their label owner and allowing them to lead the way. Yeah. Why you get that timeless sound and those timeless songs. Mm. You get me? That's why 50 Cent can still tour the world of yeah, his first album and not yeah, his second. My yeah, so. That's how the whole thing came about, bro. Mega's album, mega single deal, turned into a crew deal, and then bam, the rest is history. Did you feel like it was a hit, like straight away, when you done 21 seconds? After the video, after the video, definitely. After the video, yeah. After the video came out, 21 seconds. What about from the studio? From the studio, no, like when we first put out the song, no one liked it, radio didn't play it. No one yeah. thought it was a garage song. No one cared about it, mm. you know? Mm. We didn't even get ra Radio 1 play on the song. Is it? It, it was the whole package that made it what it was. Yeah. Like, we, we shot the video, and the video was so sick. Furthermore, 
I was so like adamant on being in creative control. Mm. When the director said, oh, look, come in, you want to come see the video? We're sick, man, come and see it. And I remember going into the studio with Max and Dania, looking at the video and saying, that's shit, mm. scrap it. Mm. So we scrapped the video and started all the edits again. I said, you see when Cage moves to the camera? Mm. You see when this man does that? You see when Fingy does that move? Mm. Put that in slow motion. Make Lisa come out of G, man, because that's his girl. Did mm. a, you know what I mean? Yeah, that video. So all of these little things, like, like, added to the video being what it was. And when the label saw it, they said, no, nah, we've got to do a premiere. Because no one wanted the video. No one wanted the song. Mm. So we've done a premiere in Central London. All the haters in the, lab in the, in the industry, mm. labels that didn't like it, people that didn't like it. Mm. We invited everybody down. And then, yeah, standing ovation after seeing the video. Man. And that was it. Mm. So what did, so did you get signed before that um, 21 seconds? Because obviously you had the single deal with Oh yeah, No. I was signed. I was signed. I was, the, I was the only one signed in the record deal. Like, After Oh No. Like Romeo and Lisa were features mm. on my single. That, that back, was the back, Oh No. Back, back in those times, if you notice that all the Gary songs that mm. were signed were the producers that were signed. Okay. Architect, Artful Dodger, mm. Pied Piper, Master Ceremony, mm -hmm. Master Steps. You know what I mean? Mm. All those songs were the producers, producers signed. The, yeah. And the artists the were the features of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was signed for the single deal, yeah, mm. featuring uh, with Lisa, Le featuring Lisa and Romeo. So you produced but really, that. Really, I just put Soul Solid on it. You produced that. Beat? Yeah, I produced. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. big beat, yeah, yeah, yeah. big beat. You I and the next man still give him his flowers. I produced. You and the next white boy or whatever. Oh, white boy. Swiss told us. Baffled. Okay. I could. Baffled. Baffle. <laughs> Baffle's not even white, you know. Baffle, it's not I white. Well, it, might, it might not be white, but, but I just knew. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you I just knew, but the name you sounded white, innit? You see, in those times. You see those times. But I just knew there was someone engineers, else. Engineers, engineers, you can class them as producers. Mm. Even though they're not producers, you, might you can class them it. as producers because <laughs> no. we didn't know how to use modules. Yeah. We only knew how to play the keys. You get me? Mm. So I played the beat in, but he would help me so what, 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 you want yeah. the beat line like that? Yeah, yeah that yeah. beat, like yeah, that bass line sounds hard. Mm. Yeah, the, the reverb it here, do you like it? Yeah, so I have to give him his props, man. Big up Baffled, man. Big up Baffled still. Yeah, big him up, big him up. Mm. So, um, all right, so you've got, so from Oh No, what, you had the, you, you had the next single deal? Oh. My single deal was two singles. So it was one with the next one, and was the next one 21 seconds? Yeah, next one was 21 seconds. And so the same people that signed you, they funded that budget for because that was yeah. mad. That what I have to big up Albert as well that because was Albert, mad. Albert and my um, my late lawyer Alexis Grower, mm. both Jewish guys, but they put in my contract that every other video big up the Jewish man them every other video had to be more. So the next video had to be more money than the last video, and the next video had to be more money than the last video. Every single deal had to be more money than the first single deal. Yeah. So for every step I took, it was more and more money. First single video, 68K. Second single video, 125. Third single, they don't know, 268. Fourth, fourth single, Ride With Us, 365. Mad. So it was like, those were just that video costs. You know what I mean? So when we got through the, to the first single, they said, fucking heck. We can't keep spending money on singles like that, otherwise we're going to be giving them 300 grand for a single. So they gave man half a million pounds for the album. Mm -hmm. And that's when I just divided it up against everybody. If you, if you featured on the track, you got you the same the amount of money. Shit. No, I didn't. No, as a company... You took the lion's No, as a company, me and G-Man were business owners at the time. You and G-Man took the lion's So I made, I made me and G-Man be business owners. And it weren't lion's share. What I learned about the business, we bucked up on lawyers and managers mm. that didn't do no work and took 20% of the deals. Yeah. Mm. And we was like, huh? Mm -mm. I said, well, we're a production team. We're doing most of the work. Mm. We're meant to be getting 20% of our deals that we're putting on. So any deal that came through, we got 20% of our production company took 20% of every deal that came through. And we were responsible for producing everybody's album. Did you have management at the time? Remember, no one's, no one's professional producers, but maybe like a JD and AC Burrell, but no one oh, yeah, has ever been in the studio before. Mm. Everyone's amateurs. Mm. 
the fuck? <laughs> the, like, do you know how much work Mega had to mm. put in? Studio time to make sure everyone's songs were up to scratch. Mm. You think I'm just doing this for free or just for a share of when I feature on the track? Mm. Did you have management? Intense. No, I had management, but it's only when other people got record deals. Mm. I couldn't manage them and and do uh, ex executive producer. How did that go? Because that's conflict of interest. How did that go with other people getting signed? Like, obviously, I think Lisa, Romeo and Harvey. I'll tell you what happened. When we created a Soul Solid album, yeah, mm. we said, look, it's impossible for you to sign everyone. It's going to cost you like 40 million. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what we'll do, we'll release a Soul Solid album. If the Soul Solid album does well, mm. then you can sign individuals. Mm. So so lab and went platinum first week, 300 cells, 300,000 cells in the first week. And that was yeah? massive back then. And that was massive back then. It's massive now. Now, but I'm just trying no to say... No one's selling 300,000. Nah, 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 nah. Your top artist, number one artist who you rate at, in the whole world is not selling 300k units in this current time. Mm. Unless you're talking about, you know, a Jay-Z or a Drake or a Travis or, you know, Katy Perry. If we put into... Um... No one's selling 300,000 units out the gate first week. Do you know yeah? what as well? Unheard of. Do you know what as well? And though? I doubt if it's ever going to be heard of in, Guess in what, this though? time. We have to put it into, um, like, let them understand as well. This ain't streaming these. All right, so this ain't streaming these. Yeah, so this, this is, so, is like... Bro, imagine how much more we have to understand people, that. That would be double or triple. 300,000 people. Bro, streaming days, yeah? Put it that, this way. Trust me. The, if you was the, able to HMV, stream... HMV, Virgin and all these yeah, shops said 300,000 mm. people are going to walk in our store mm. and buy this album. Mm. Yeah? 300,000 people walked into their stores mm. that first week and purchased the album so imagine for if it to streaming. go number one. Mm. Imagine if you're streaming. So, and that's, and that's £10.99. Mm. The label is turning over a motherfucker at the same time. There's crazy money mm. for them. They recoup. Right. They recouped of their recouped videos. They recouped of the album of and videos, videos and everything. <laughs> all up to this date. Yeah. So, bro, you know back in the day, like, artists would have to bring their song, bring their song to the table and say, yeah, this is my song, can I get my deal? Asha D, this is my song, can I get my deal? Romeo, this is my song, can I get my... There weren't none of that. Mm. Mm. Mega and Albert walked into these labels and said, who do you want next? Mm. Oh, we want Romeo. This is how much it's going to cost. Was Romeo the next no the first song. one they wanted, yeah? There weren't no song. Mm. Romeo was the first one they wanted. There weren't no new song from Romeo. Mm. There wasn't even a bar from Romeo. There wasn't even a 16 on a fresh track mm. from Romeo. Yeah? 250 bags out the gates. Romeo got half a million pound publishing and thingy mm. deal. Mm. Lisa Mafia, no new song. She was the next one. She didn't even, yeah, she was the next oh. one. She didn't have to go in there and sing a verse. Mm. She didn't have to sing a line. Mm. She didn't have to go in there and say, there's my single. Mm. We walked in there and said, you want Lisa? 350k. Oh, dear. Yeah, lit. Walked out the door. I, I stepped the in girl. the car. I, I, I stepped back in the car and looked at Amy and said, because <laughs> I was going out with a girl called Amy that time, yeah? Mm. Looked at Amy and said, that's another 350k, you know? Mm. Yeah, just got Lisa a deal. But where is she? Nah, she's not there, man. No, what, no song? Nah, 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 just of the source of the album. Mm. So remember, those times if you got 300 and something grand for the album deal mm. you get near publishing. enough that yeah, same yeah. for the publishing. publishing yeah come on so i'm cleaning like <laughs> yeah, yeah. half a million six hundred bags for each member of the crew that got album deals what was your percentage of that 20 percent signing only 20 percent of the um of the music of the um record deal not mm. the publishing and even though i writ certain of the songs like all over with jd asher writ his own stuff romeo writ his own stuff you know what I mean? But I executive produced all those albums apart from Ashes. Mm. Yeah? Like, it was, it was did heavy they sign dealings. Asher? Yeah, no, I didn't sign Asher. No, but did I got they Asher. Said, did yeah, they, they signed Asher. So, Asher got 350k. Romeo, Romeo Lisa, Lisa, Asher. Was he next? Asher. Romeo. After, after Lisa, who came next? Asher. Asher, and then. Harvey, Harvey got Harvey. 100 grand for a single deal. Oh. But Harvey was, at that time, Harvey was like, I want to do my own thing. I want to. I want to mm. present my own sort of single. I want to do it my way. Mm. Harvey was kind of like that a lot of the time. Okay. I didn't quite understand, but he was like that a lot of the time. So he got a single deal, but the single, the single that he put out, I doubt if he would even want, want to play that today. 
Shabs produced it as well, but mm. it was a lot of money, 100 grand for one single. What was it called again? It's a lot of get up and move. I can't remember it, but if I remember it, I would have acted it out right now. Yeah, get up and move. I could sing it still, but I don't want to sing it to you, bro. I would probably remember it, that's what I'm saying, but if I, if I know it, then I'd remember it. Yeah, so... Yeah, that was big, man. And then straight away, they gave me a million pounds for a label. Mm. And then they gave me another million pounds for publishing. So everyone who, could, who I couldn't get signed to labels, I signed to a thing. That's when I started recruiting Whose everybody. Whose account did that go into? What, the, the mill? Yeah. The business account. Eh? Yeah, the business so you account. Had, like, so you, just, you, you had control of that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, bro. Mainstream pattern. Yeah, of course. Shit. Of course, lion share, everything, <laughs> nah, bro. No, Remember, all of this no, started from, oh, no, that's nah, the word, no, you know? Hey. Remember, you see what you got to think of it along mm. the way, yeah? Mm. None of my brethren wanted to step into business. Yeah. Mm. It's Mega's dad and his dad's side of the family that was encouraging them about business. So even though my friends were doing little drugs and on the streets and that, I was like, this isn't the end on the bill, let's get legit. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Building the crew, taking care of everybody's interest, that was my thing. Even if problems happen on the streets, you think Chaos or Face or Mac and them not wanted to step out for any crew member. Mm. They wanted to step out for me. Mm. So if I didn't step out, <laughs> no one's stepping out for nobody. So I had to step out all the time. Mm. And not, ever, not on a bad thing, but just on a like, blood, leave the youths alone, man. Mm. They're doing music, they mind their own business, you know what I mean? Like, that's all it was really. So, so I, yeah, I, a million did, pounds for that and a million pounds for the publishing though. So how, that did was man, like how did man go about dealing with all of that? Cause obviously, them time there, was, you know what I mean? Crab. I tell you what, bro. Yeah. So obviously, bare people would you have, have been to take. You to have be... to take. You have to take the little disrespects as a small thing, man. Mm. There's enough man, G face, you know, enough man that done little petty disrespects along the way, while I was building so solid, mm. and little things like that. Not, not really big, but most people wouldn't want them to be friends today. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I kind of just look past that to build the bigger picture, man. Mm -mm -mm. You know what I mean? So. If I didn't bypass that and look at the bigger picture, we mostly wouldn't have created something so big. And I was like, I was always taking care of people's interests. I always wanted everybody to be on the same level, regardless whether they were on the same level or not. And some people today get carried away with it. Some people today want to take, they might want to take your genius and act like it's their genius. You understand what I'm saying, Cream? And that's how it went most of the time, so. So, I, I did you um, end up getting a link in Ayanapa? Because obviously, We've been told by Frisco and a lot of other people that you had that island on Smash, and I know you had that island on Smash. Yeah, yeah. Man, Iron Apple was a thing where... That's where you met the man. I well. kind of felt it was a, a release. Car London was a bit too secluded, grimy, and you know what I mean? I felt it was like a free reign for us. Whose idea was it to go there, though? Um, Oxide Neutrino got a book in there. OK. And me and Dan the Man and Romeo got a book Big in there. as well. Big up Dan the Man. Yeah. And that was the first time we went there, you know what I mean? Mm. So when we got that book in there, I kind of looked around and thought, rah. And then this, this young Cypriot, you tapped me on the shoulder. Yo, man, so solid, man. I hear you, you lot should come to my family's club, man. I want to be in so solid. Trigger. You know what I mean? No, that was Sniper. Oh, snap. And then his friend Trigger was like, yeah, man, I want to be in so solid too, man. Next year when you come back, come to our clubs, I'll show you the level out here. Mm. So when I went back in February to set up like, the events and all of that, they kind of showed me the wow factor, how much they own on the island, how much, that, well, what they did, the connects that they had. Yeah. And I went back the following year and Mac came as well, but Mac had a real close connection with, with um, Triggs. Mm. So as we're moving through the island, there were some like couple Pekka mutes that were just, they didn't really like how we were moving. And I, I can't say they're known mutes today, but they were from Peckham still. And they didn't really like how we were moving. So one time I remember I was outside, the, I came outside the rave and I was just chatting to them like, yo, what's up? You know, everyone's drunk. Like, what are you, you, you guessing for, man? Relax, blood, man. Man, box me in the face, blood. <laughs> blood. I don't know what it was which why a man boxed me in the face, yeah? But after that, it was mud. <laughs> but all I saw was red. You get me? So there was a mad fight on the island. Someone got stabbed up. Next minute. Are you like the Dizzy thing? Nah, this is, oh, before, this, is this is two years before mm. Dizzy, bro. Mm. Someone got stabbed up. Next minute, Soul Solid Villa's getting raided. You get me? Mm. Me and Max in the police station. Shit. Yeah, in Ayanapa. Sniper walks into the police station and says, What's going on, man? Mega, 
right in the interview, Mega, hold my keys, mm. sit in the car. Oh my gosh, he's got them shent there. <laughs> he's got them shent there, fam. <laughs> We're on the police interview. Fam. Now, big up sniper, man. Fam. Him out. Big up sniper, man. He was in, I was in the police station, <laughs> I remember him walking in the That's interview room. Shen. And saying, Mega, Take my keys. <laughs> oh, Wait that, in the car. That's bad man still. I said, that's bomb bad man still. That's lot. bad man still. You see from there, blood? Mm. And he's in so solid. No, you that's see from bad there, man bro? still. It was mad. So the next year I went back, <laughs> I was like, listen, man, if you don't want to make sure everything on this island's calm, just let me know. Yeah? And man will calm everything on this island. Blood, I done the brave one. You see, like two years after getting to know you lot. Mm. Who got in trouble? Taylor. Hmm. Taylor will tell you still. I feel one of them man that took my watch one of these times, man, but we'll, we'll, we'll address that another time. But Taylor will tell you still, they all got into one issue in, um, in one of the hotels. Ending that guy in police station, man said, cool mega. Every time, every time something happened with police, man's like, cool mega, cool mega, cool mega. So I remember walking into the police station saying, what's going on? I remember like those times, they, they weren't really up to scratch with technology, mm. you know what I mean? The computers, they looked at the computers, they it's were all like... Mad. Yeah, it's all mad. So mad idiot computers mm. in interviews, they're writing on paper and that. You think they want to write on paper in interviews? Half of these police don't even understand our slang, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Walked in the interview room, mm. blood. Ox Taylor fam, will tell you. Walked in the interview I said, what, yo, Mega, you know him? Mm. It's me, yeah, man, this is my brethren still, man. Okay. It's me. Don't worry, man. Like, yo, Taylor, one second, man. Step out the room. Give that different style. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> you try to give him, try give him sniper style. I try to give him you sniper give him style. style. Hey, yo, T. I gave him sniper yeah, style, bro. I said, yo, Taylor, step out the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Uh, Sat down. I said, what's up, mega? Did the, the, the money and did the. It's me. What? All of them. He said, look. <laughs> One of them's already confessed, Mega. <laughs> I, oh I can't God. do nothing about it. Why did he confess? One bro? man confessed no, already, bro. Well, I don't broke, know. He broke. I, he, Taylor will tell you, he man. He broke, fam. Taylor will tell he, you, bro. He reckon broke. Taylor will tell you. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Taylor will tell you, bro. You he, admitted. Taylor confessed. You admitted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Taylor confessed. Taylor yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, confess. Man, man. One of one of the bridges already confessed. Mm. You get me? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um. From then, Taylor walked out of the police station and didn't even look back. Everything was crisp after that. Mm. You know what I mean? But a lot of things happened before then, where like every time I come to the island, the police would want my number because they were connected to Sniper's family, CID and all of that. Anytime badness happened on the island, they would want to so call my phone. How could you could have patterned it when it bust my head, fam? Of course I patterned it, bro. And when you, it, what I, you mean? I had to bust out the island, fam. No, you didn't I have to bust out the call. island. Let me, tell you, let me tell you why. I had to call, let me tell you why he didn't want. I had to call, let me tell, let me tell you why he bust his head. They, they let me tell you, let me they, tell you why he said got bus. Let me tell you why he said got bus. Because he thought he could bring the London attitude mm. to, 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 to Iron Upper. <laughs> Didn't work, innit? Didn't work, bro. Didn't work. But if he called, man, and I was next to him, his head wouldn't have got bus. Mm. Bus because open. Because when they was after... Bus open. When Buckhead, when they was all after Buckhead, <laughs> and they lined up outside Insomnia, 50 security, and they was running all of them down all over the island. Mm. Then, man, they kicked out of the island, but I was with Buckhead. <laughs> Buckhead was the only one that stayed. Mm. Man said, Mega, you got me, yeah? You got me, yeah? <laughs> that's how that's how Bucket was. I said, yeah, I got you, man. Just stand right here, blood. No one's fucking with you, blood. And that's how it was, bro. Yeah. You get me? Mm. And even when, like, I brought half of Brixton over there, MB, Free Finger, yeah, enough M. Brixton man come over that, that, that M, year man. with that same thing. I yeah, yeah, I know, I remember. I said, man, them stand for him. Where you going? Mm. And I was dealing with one um, girl from Cyprus as well. But she had MB a, what brought me hospital. She had a link to the... Um, to the Turkish side mm. of um, of Cyprus, mm. so I had the Turkish side of Cyprus on my patch, the Yaris, yeah, mm. making phone calls and that. You get me? Man is in the whole thing. So in those times, yeah, anytime I hit the island, it was more of like, Mega. I hope you can keep everything calm. If you keep everything calm, on the, even the mayor, I used to go to dinner meetings with the mayor. With, well, go on, you good. Respect, respect. Pull up, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good, I'm good. Mind games, mind games, mind games. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, like anytime I went to the island, it was just more of they wanted to keep the island out of the newspapers. They wanted to yeah. keep everything manners. 
they knew the reputation of the bad boys that were coming over. Police were sending over documents to the police stations in Ayanapa of like Tottenham man and Brixton mm. man and East man and Birmingham man and all of that, bro. So the police was had their back up. They were kind of in fear. Mm -hmm. But because we was the biggest crew from South West London and everyone had a certain respect for man, I reckon enough man hated man anyway, mm. but they had a respect for man at the same time. Because in Somia, when I used to say in Sonia, and everyone, every man's going into some If Megas out there, everyone's mm. raving for free. Megas in the rave, free bar the whole night. Mm. How many bottles of champagne? Free up Tempo as well, you know. Tempo is there that. <laughs> yeah. 20 Temp bottles, 50 Tempo's bottles, there. you know what I mean? Certain man might, you might used to look at that and pull money out their pocket and be like, they're not understanding, Megas getting this for free. Megas not paying for nothing. But it was like that, man. Iron Apple was a, was a free reign for all of us. So that's kind of like, how I, how I had Iron Apple unlocked, like the police, if you had a source of the t-shirt on and got stopped without a helmet, go, 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 it's okay. If you had a gold chain on with diamonds, they thought you were so solid, go, 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 okay. If you said, so solid, man, go, 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 okay. You know what I mean? So it was, it was one of those vibes, bro. So now, now we're back to um, where we started. Yeah. When you need a man them. Yeah. See how heavy that is? Yeah. Gone back, oh, we're back now. I'll tell you how up I linked to the times, you get what I'm saying? How I linked you lot in, in Iron Apple is that when I got my label deal, I signed East Con I signed like man from different areas. Mm. So I signed like East Connection, Double O Slim Ting. Mm. Gave them their first record deal, like a hundred K I gave them. Okay. Uh, gave Major them Ace Maxwell deal. Yeah, I gave them a hundred bucks for single. Oh my God. I signed um Cream Cartel. Mm. I signed 2G Family from West Nino Brown and that. I signed, um, I who else did I sign? I signed a couple of men from North. I wanted to sign each man from every end. I want to sign people from every end and just bring the whole of London together. Mm. You get me? So when I done that, like, that was a big thing. So when I went to Ayanapa, when I went to Ayanapa, enough man had an issue. I think Heartless had an issue with, um, with Major Ace. Mm. But the way how Heartless made it seem, the way how Heartless made it seem to North London man, right, Mega Man and them lots cut it up out here. You love to come out here and help <laughs> us pattern the thing and da 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 da. Next minute, Tottenham man's on the island. <laughs> you get me? Mm. Asking for my name and that. <laughs> it's not the place to ask for my name. Not on this island. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe in London, but on this island it's slightly different. And you had Big John with you. Mm. Big John, yeah, man, I'm separate, man. Don't worry, I got it locked. All mm. of that, mm. all of that talk he was talking. Luca, was it Luca? Yeah, John it might Luca. have been. Yeah, John, John Luca. Luca. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I remember being on the beach one time and Bucket called him. I said, "You calling me? Cut a song, sure." So I had a conversation with the man. Then I said, "Look, the man that signed to me, I don't mm. care what problems you lot got with East and all of that, but that's my interest there. You're signed to my label. Mm. This is why. Remember, I've got my afro out." Two chains on, big hell mega ring. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it, it, I just looked mad, but I looked like I had money. Mm. I, never, I didn't comb my hair one day of my life in those times. You get me? So they kind of said, rah, no, nah, for real, man, no, nah, respect. And I said, if you don't need anything on the island, just let me know. Then John Lucas stepped up and said, nah, man, I've got this locked man pattern, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. But I just think, like, you lot were just too gangster for the island. So I think Bucket lost his watch in the rave or something like that. Mm. And then them man, they that's just on, flipped. That's on tape. Right. Yeah, them man, they just flipped in the rave and went mad. And went mad on security and went mad on everybody. And then that was it. They, the, the island just switched on the whole of like Northside at that time. Yeah. I remember John getting fucked up, a couple of men getting fucked up. <laughs> yeah. They left the island. It, a certain man escaped to it's Egypt. Mad, it's mad, it's mad, it's mad. You know what I mean? It's mad, it's mad, it's mad. And then Bucket was left by himself, and that was the first time I kind of bonded with Bucket and made him stay in man's hotel and make him drive man's car out there and that. And yeah, it was a whole different thing them time. Mm. I remember the same thing kind of happened like a couple of years down the line. Like, um, <laughs> fam, you know what? I've never told I this story can't before, you know. I even believe you never stopped that. No, 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 that's yeah, a but, weird one, that's a weird yeah, one. Yeah, but you have to stop everyone. Don't, I was leaving it for you, I swear I would have stopped him. It's no, but, true, man. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, cool, cool, cool. No, but true man's been stopping, like, little kids and 
if we're stopping little kids and that, we've got to stop the big yeah, light skin dreads better, as well. He, know, he knows better, you know he knows better. He just, cool, 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 just cool, wanted cool, to cool, do cool, that. Cool, cool. Man, yeah, 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 that's, that's, I'm, I'm just letting you know, I know about stuff. And if it was on my corner... No, nah, man so, should have kicked him in his yeah, for that still. But, yeah. Mm. Fam, you know what? I have to stop being... A, this is the I'm last like, time... I'm up, look. You know what? This is the last time, <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm going to be drinking Ray and Nephew mixed with... Yeah, Sato, don't do that, because remember, coming on that's the hood, what Swiss done. Talking this thing, because no, trust me, done. I want a different life, bro. This yeah, is long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah even, though yeah. I, even though I've got a certain vibe about me... Yeah, let's calm down. I'm just taking that into business now, man. Fuck all this shit. All right, so, boom. Link the man, then. Um, so, yeah, one time, blood, yeah... Like, Wes and my brother went on a mad one on the island and one Paddy you got stabbed. But this time, me, I'm chilling in my hotel. See one's in his hotel. Police call my phone, CID, mega. Stabbing, da 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 oh, This time, two. Inch knew what he done. Mm. Wes knew what happened. Both of them are staying quiet. He said, yes, he said it was a guy with a gold teeth. This time, it wasn't a guy with a gold teeth. My brother just had a little star on his teeth, mm. which the guy recognised. But it wasn't a guy with the gold teeth. So me like some fucking confident brother. Yo, see, they're trying to say it's you, blood, but you're in your hotel, blood. Yeah, they want us to they want me to they want me to come over to your hotel, man. I'm coming over to your hotel, bro. So I went over to his hotel, knocked on his door. Look, he's in his room, man. There's nothing wrong with him. He's in his room chilling. Come to the police station. You know I see one, and see one don't like them for shit, bro. See one don't like them for fucking little scum, man. In the car, like. What are you looking at, man? Dickhead. You know who man is? You know who man is? Fucking bad. You know, like, a fucking bad man for you, you know? That's how C1 was. C1 can act so nice and calm sometimes, but when he switches on, different guy. So he was doing that all the way, so the police was like, hmm, I'm going to stitch this one up one day. By the time we got to the police station, they stitched up C. They knew Wes was there, but they stitched up C, blood. Put both of them in jail. You get me? Is that the Dizzy Rascal thing? No, nah, not the Dizzy Rascal oh. thing. This is, this is a so different thing, was... bro. You get me? Yeah. And um, put both of them in jail, blah. But this time, it was my fucking... Allegedly, it was my inch involved. You get me? Yeah. But he just kept it quiet yeah. the whole time, trying to get them out. Trigger's dad helped them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, get them out, you know what I mean? And it was just, it just was one of the madness. But that's one of the worst... That's one of the times where I said, fuck, man, I should have never fucking... You know what I mean? Mm. Brought them over to man's hotel and even, I should have just said, fuck off, man. It's nothing to do with man and put down the phone. Mm. But that's, the, yeah, that, that one time there was just a long thing for man. So did man, man and men not get shit for the Dizzy Rascal thing? No one got so shit for the Dizzy Rascal thing. Now, I remember um, the man was in the newspapers for it. Yeah, no one got nicked for the Dizzy Rascal thing, man. Why like, did the newspapers say you know what? Did you know what? You know what was funny about it? Because everyone remembers the Dizzy Rascal thing in a, some sympathy way. And I think that's kind of like a back to front thing. Mm. Because Dizzy Rascal and, and Asha D had a rivalry thing. They had a clash, yeah? And what happened is that Lisa Mafia's on stage in black and white. Dizzy Rascal with this drunk self went on stage and grabbed Lisa Mafia's bum. While she's on stage performing, pinched her ass. In this day and age, that is sexual assault, yeah? So, you done that. Did he pinch you or slap it? Fam, he pinched nah, her butt. Pinch Fam, let me nah, say something. To know. Nah, I Lisa know Mafia has big Lisa them. Mafia on her back. This is So Solid's Island. You're in a rave and So Solid. You ain't performing. Yeah, he went mad. He went it's your big first up, time here. Dizzy, but You're he gone mad. mad. Yeah, he went Furthermore, she's around C1 these times. Mm. What are you doing? C1 saying, nah, man, I handled it. I said, bro, what do you mean you handled what, bro? Mm. What you talking about? You're trying to soften man's thing like Dizzy can, like Dizzy's like that. Like he can just go and pinch a girl's bum in man's crew on that on. Even if I was rivalry with, with it and you're one of the girls in the crew, you think I'm brave enough to go on stage with my Zambuca self and grope you, mm. knowing that I'm not. This is a madman still. Yeah, you're going to get a cuff put off bath mm. in your head. Like, you're mad. Like, I expect to be hit up. Mm. So I took no apologies that day. When he came and approached me, could have both bang bing, you know Batman, you know the Batman signs, boom, 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 all of that. He defended himself. He was swinging with his head down like, whoosh, all of that shit. We both dropped to the floor. Um, he was on, he was on, Wiley he was on, got involved. He, he was on job though. Wiley was the only one he, involved. He wasn't on job, man. He no, was, but at least he was swinging with his head down. He was defending himself. Yeah, still. no, but the, yeah, he, he was defending himself. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't up, on job. Up, he He's never been on job ever since. So I don't know what you're talking about on job, bro. So what, while, but look, he's, while he's the one that's... It's nothing to brag about, it's nothing to no, brag about. Bragging. But I just feel any man 
that is under some sexual assaulting, any paedophilic thing, rape thing and all of that, mm. you forget punched up. Mm. And if the feds catch you, yeah, get what you're getting as well. You understand what I'm saying? No clock. And that's all it was. No clock. I don't know about no clock. I didn't I didn't look into all of that. Yeah? So let's stay on job. Let's stay on on, on, on subject here. So that happened. Yeah? Now the next day, allegedly, Please, allegedly, Wiley has bucked up on certain man and done the madness with a couple of his friends, Diesel, Diesel and a couple other men. And oh, yeah, allegedly, a knife was pulled out. Down the road, the next day, down the, not the next day, the same day that's happened, down the road, police has like bucked up on Dizzy Rascal. Mm. I hear you have problems with me. This is police, you know, on the side of the road. You have problems with Mega on this island. Hmm. You are going to leave now. <laughs> you go. We don't want you here. Oh. Did it? All of that cost us turn up, man. I got the phone call. I had to pull up on the side of the road, see the police there with Dizzy. I was like, nah, man, Dizzy's cool, man. What, no beef in the mix? Nah, man, everything's Chris Dizzy. Nah, we're cool, man, no problem. So police let him go. You get me? Little did I know that that happened down the road with, with Wiley and couple so so the crew members but really they bad up someone that wasn't a so so the crew member but had a t-shirt so so the crew t-shirt on mm. so he's in his feelings already what i'm not even man i'm not even fucking sort of man trying to bad me up because i'm the littlest one out the batch all of that sort of shit mm. so i got the phone call megs you know this has happened i said what can i say man you look do your thing you get me and i don't mean do your thing like fucking hurt man and that but defend yourself innit mm. Next minute, Dizzy just fell into that, fell into the aftermath of that. You get me? And the, and the, and the local man, not the local man, but my man who's, who's short and had a little issue and got troubled with, kind of just took it a little bit left. But I, I did, I did man end up being in the paper for that. I swear I remember I was in jail. Everything that happened in... I remember I, I was in jail, yeah? And I swear I see CM West in the paper. CM was in the paper for something else, but everything that happened on the island, so so oh, was, was, that was getting blamed for. Um, on the, in the paper for what you used to go back? Be, before, yeah. Okay. Okay, like no, everything that happened on the island, so so was in trouble for that. Mm. They hardly put my name in the, in the paper, you get me? But every problem that happened on the island, so solid. Did he have a gold chain on? So solid. Did he have thingy on? So solid. Is he black? So solid. Mm. No hell with driving with a moped? So solid. Everything, man. But the only thing I liked about it is that we didn't really care. If you came from London and you were stranded or you didn't have money in your pocket and you wanted free raves, as long as Soul Soul is there, you're going to have a whale of a time, you know what I mean? Back to London now, yeah? Mm. Obviously, boom, you're at your height. Um, 21 seconds gone number one. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't actually mentioned that, but yeah, that was actually number one for how yeah. many weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Um, what was the next single after that? They don't know. They don't know. Where did that chart? That charted number three or four. And then the next single after that? Next single after that was... Ride With Us. What was the one with um, Asha D, that big video, man? Are you not... They don't know, yeah. Oh, was that they don't know? All right, cool. Haters was a, was a part of the whole project as well, but that was more Shabzi's single deal. So at the same time, in between, you're getting bookings, you're getting all of this, but Bear Madness is going on in your shows, bro, like... Shots are firing. They get you're getting the blame for bare madness. Yeah. Um, there's now the media's starting to go against you lot now. You know what happened? Mm. Like it's, it's 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 what it's what we done in it. Mm. When people get into the music industry, they they get so big that their prices get big, their agents get big, and they don't want to perform at the lower level raves that made them. Uh. What we done? We stuck to performing at our lower level raves. Yo, that mate, go them. around, mate. Go around, mate. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I swear down, I'm joking, I swear I'm joking. I swear I'm joking. Oh my gosh, oh my, this is too outrageous. That was just a joke. The young ones are crazy, innit? That was such a joke, and that was, I uh, drove me. That was the wrong one, that was the wrong one. You should have, uh, right, someone should have got involved in that <laughs> one there still. He's gonna go around the door, you know? <laughs> Skip, what? Skip, oh my G. <laughs> I'm gonna go around. <laughs> good, yeah, yeah, yeah. See you in a minute, my brother. Good. Yeah, yeah, love. Oh, man, you know like how everyone's stepping out for man today. You get me? Well, go on, G. You good? What about yeah. people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come respect, on, man. respect, yeah, yeah. respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where was we? Where was we? Where was we? Yeah. Yeah, what it was, yeah, is that 
we, we kind of kept loyalty to the garage scene. Mm. And at the same time, we're getting popular. The garage scene is fighting us. Mm. The community, our, our streets are fighting against us, like waiting for us to slip up and all of that. So it's like, when we done an event, there was a shootout at, our, at our, one of our events. Mm. You know what I mean? We had to turn up with Nation of Islam, all of that. Even one time, when we done an event in Hackney Oceans, mm. I had the Nation of Islam around me. Mm. So I had like a hundred men at the back of at Hackney Oceans and police at the front. So we locked down whole, and I, was, and I was with you, like, I had you lot in the building. I had like C1, yeah, you're mega, you're mad, man. I, we can't do a fucking rave in Hackney, but it's gonna go off. There were no problems there, you know what I mean? Because the way how we locked it down, it was different. And this is why I kind of look at the industry today and I say, a lot of people have rivalries with different factions of areas. But if you want to lock down your venue, your little event, your little celebration, you can lock it down and have every rivalry in the building and lock it down. Have different levels of security where people behave themselves. You know what I mean? You gotta know you how to have you, you gotta you gotta know how to have different level of connections, whether it's whether it's the police outside, whether it's security on the inside, to lock it down so that everybody can have a party. We're not here about discriminating each other from events and from certain avenues from getting the bag just because you, you want to flex your power. You can't flex your power with the other cultures, but we're all flexing our power with our own culture, you know what I mean? Mm -mm -mm. So it's a little bit dumb. So that's why I kind of wanted to just show that we could do events still and just lock it down a certain way regardless. And that's why um, problems started to occur, mm -hmm. started to occur. Like they sh there was a shooting outside um, Garage Delight, one of our Garage Delight raids, and we was in the newspapers and that jeopardized our whole tour. We couldn't really tour because of that. And that's just us showing loyalty to the scene that made us. Yeah, we didn't have to do that event, but we done it out of love, you know what I mean? So now, obviously, with that, the show, because show money, I would imagine, was like a, played a part, a big part in, or not? Yeah, show money does play a big part. Like, show money is, is something that, it's everyone's bread and butter, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, people want, you only get, in the music industry, you only get money twice at the beginning of your project and when you deliver your project. Like That's why every, like when you get, when you have an album deal, yeah, I'll break it down. When you have an album deal, you get a percentage of your album money. When you complete your album, you get the other percentage of your album money. Mm. If your album does good, you get your next album budget. Okay. You get me? If your album doesn't do good, they're going to be umming and ahhing whether to even give you your next album budget. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why pe some people rush their albums, some people rush their projects just to get to the next, next level of bag. And the next minute, whatever you thought was gonna be their third or fourth or fifth album, it doesn't happen. With So So The Second Album, it was meant to be a double album. Mm. I've done tunes with Beanie Man, I've done tunes with Khalees, I've done tunes with so many different, um, we've done 21 Seconds Part 2, Wall you Part 2. No, we done, I've done songs with Khalees, bro. You've done something else with Khalees. Didn't do nothing else with Khalees, cool, bro. It's cool, it's cool, but you get what I'm saying? Come on, Khalees man. is a cool friend of mine yeah, still, you get me? Cool. Come on, man. We ain't even talking about that. Let me get a WhatsApp. We ain't even talking <laughs> about that. Khalees is cool, no, bro. No, no. This is cool, man. Come on, all the milkshakes. Big up Khalees. Big up Khalees. Big up everyone around there, you know what I yeah, mean? We don't kiss him, Staying bro, good. Do you get me? So what happened to Max, We don't kiss What happened with Max? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bynes, man. You don't know it's coming for us, man. But, yeah. <laughs> but these Americans can't come for nobody, nah, bro. God. Oh, no, he start, don't start him off, you know. Yeah? Especially on <laughs> man's territory, Cam, bro. Man. This is London. Cam's cool, man. No, Cam, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, like, I like all of them. I like everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just don't belittle what we've got here over here, man, and everything's what crisp. What happened with that, though? Cam? With what? Um, with the Cam situation, because obviously... This is why I say, like, yeah, yeah, people, yeah, don't, yeah, back, yeah, people don't really back. understand what South London's like and what Battersea or Brixton or like fam like like i already told you our radio station is in brixton like mm. supreme fm mm. the soul solar album was produced in brixton dairy studios dairy. every day and night cars parked outside dairy not a scratch not a smash window no nothing we're there every day when rockefeller came over here beanie siegel memphis bleak we brought them to a brixton studio and not a west one <laughs> not in no safe haven mm. you know what i mean face is living in Mitesfield. Everybody talks like Mitesfield or some jungle Baghdad, estate. Baghdad. 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 Listen, Mitesfield weren't Baghdad to me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
It won't bag dad to me. We got, we got the bag dad. Yeah, man, maybe school. like when yeah, we got maybe when enough man, man maybe when enough man took on the Muslim thing. And I tell you one thing, like the Muslim thing kind of connected a lot of black youth that were some were afraid. You know what I mean to be to be out out there on their own and not be a part of something. And some understood the religion and knew it was a beautiful thing, and they took it on for the right reasons. But enough man did use certain things as a form of togetherness and protection and, and as a form like, of like in intimidate, intimidating people, you know what I mean? So you started to hear names of estates, Baghdad, Jairak, and listen, let that go, man. Yeah, there's no Taliban here. But I didn't see any of those areas as, as any, the, 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 cult, the areas you can't go to. Any, er, er, any area that you hear about, whether it's, you know, Chalk Farm, whether it's, fields in East London, whether it's complex, where, where Stonebridge, wherever it is, if you're from those areas and you've been to those areas before, you know what time to move, you know what time to go there, you know when to step out and when not to step out. The whole hood isn't just when you step in, it's on. You know what I mean? You know how to drive, you know how to move in these areas. It's just us as a black community, you want to gas up these areas like it's a no-go zone, like it's real Afghanistan. And it's nothing like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes we've got to kind of just pipe down our level of badness and, and put it in a category and just be a little bit more rational and, and respectable of how we are as people because it makes us sound like savages and we're not savages. Our gangster, when it comes to what we're meant to do with it, yeah, was senseless. You get me? It had no form of order, had no form of ambition. It was just badness of disrespecting your friends, disrespecting Gyalem, sexual bullshit, with the gallum that we used to like and all of that, breeding up each other's girls and friends and sisters and cousins, and it led to nothing. And now everyone's online talking about, can only talk about how bad they were, but it led to nothing. It's like failed achievements. So this is why I'm saying, I'm one of those people, bro, where when you look on life and when you look on what you're meant to be doing with your badness, it has to lead to business. It has to lead to foundational wealth. It has to lead to where you can come to your ends in this day, 2023, and not even look. How many times have I looked around me for someone? You know what I mean, blood? You're meant to be calm. It's meant to be a place where your, where your grandparents and your kids can grow up and everything's crisp, no shots are flying and feds ain't, got a, feds ain't got to turn around all the time. One. You got a glove on. Yeah, Leave me alone, fam. This no, is the conversation. Should I take it off? Shall it take doesn't it off? look calm. It don't look calm. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm I'm just saying with guy. the speech, it doesn't make the speech. <laughs> the speech doesn't seem like this with a glove on. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying. You know, you know, you know, you know why I wear a glove majority of the time no, I'm now. I'm just saying. You know, you know why. Obviously, this is, one this hand is, gets colder. This is no. no <laughs> <laughs> you know why? You know why he moves like that? I'm just an OCD guy, man. <laughs> I'm just a, uh, I'm just a, I'm just an old CD guy, bro. That mic must have picked up that laugh. That, that man <laughs> forgot the mic, didn't it? I'm an old CD guy, man. I just like to move yeah, a certain mind way. Mind games. He's, not, not touch. He's on mind games. You know, like I'm never on mind of, games. From, look, remember, remember, got shot. remember, bro. No, he nearly got shot. Remember, remember, he, remember. Can't take too I'm, much noise. I'm in Battersea, bro. I'm in yeah, Battersea. no, no, no. I'm in Junction. I know. No, but um, all right, cool. So. Because the media started turning their backs on man as well, bro, man. Like, how did that feel? Like, obviously, from being at the top, everyone's like, yeah, so solid. You know what? Even behind man. The media can never, know. the media can never turn their backs on man, yeah. If it wasn't for our community turning our back, turning their backs on us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, no, no! You know what? I'm going mad. Why did you run off Cam off the stage? You changed it. That's what I was. That's what we was talking about. Cam. Why oh, did you run Cam that's off what we're speaking yeah. about. All right, so people don't understand um, South, South West London. And it wasn't even running Camp of Daisy. That wasn't the beginning no, thing. Saying, yeah, I know, but... What happened is that we had, a good, we, had, we, had a, we had a good link with, um, with Rockefeller at the time. Mm. I mean, and we booked Dipset to come over. But my brother Barry, Inch, he, he, Barry. He, he called me and said, yo, my brother Dan, Ezekiah's cousins and that, he wants to put into some music and that, he wants to do events and that. He's got some money, he wants to do that. So we put up the bulk of the money. I made them go on the plane to Rockefeller Studios and that, and um, bring, bring 70k cash mm -hmm. and give the camera's manager, Fat Joe, so that we can solidify them. So when you're walking in a building, in an office, everything's Chris. So we're doing the promotion over here, man's spending money, I'm grabbing money from this brother, and I'm saying, what you want to put in? You know what I mean? Putting in a certain amount of paper, but it's all off of my back and my reputation, mm -hmm. giving them the link, 
saying, yo, this is, these are certified people, we can book them to come over and they'll definitely turn up and do the tour. You know what I mean? Mm. So this is, two, tw this is 2004. They were meant to come over and do it. Next minute, they didn't turn up. We met them in, in, in Napa that year, remember? Was it Napa that year that we met? No, that was Be Memphis Bleak. Bleak yeah, Memphis Bleak, Beehive came it over. That year, it? Yeah, no, 04. 2003. Or, yeah, early, yeah, 04, uh, 04 early 04. Early 04. <coughs> so when they came over, no, when we put on the concert, they never come over. Cameron come online and was bigging up North Star, but North Star had nothing to do with it. But he's still big. I was rating that though. Yeah, I was rating that big still, man. Cam, because I, I, I think in rock. It wasn't people, Cam, it was, Jim, was, it was Jim Jones. Me. No, but I don't know, but people was following, I didn't hear it. Yeah, Jim people Jones. Oh, you know, you know, you know, big up, you're North Star. Yeah. Oh, oh. So that was good, man. I, I rated that still. But then they didn't turn up. And I heard that happen with a lot of like promoters. So you know, American nothing, artists taking people. money not turning up, not coming to events, but it's just the wrong utes that you took money from. Yeah, basically. It's gonna piss me off. That's the wrong utes you took money from. Southwest London utes, we're not the promoters, we're not man that, that's getting invested that can just lose money and knock it on the head. You know what I mean? So... We're gonna take that you to took, the grave. <laughs> we're gonna take... Yeah, you took money from, man. Don't come back here until you're willing to pay. And that's all it was. So when, when some promoters thought it was cool to book... Like, a couple of them have been here while I was in jail on my doing my thing in jail trying to get out yeah we're gonna go but when i came out of that i heard certain man was bringing jules santana over playing that and i was like yo they're coming over blood lock that down man yeah. lock that down my brother reaps inch like pecker man turned up brixton man turned up tanner beer man turned up and said nah that's not it's not happening on our watch you get me it's not happening on an hour watch, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just Mega's involvement. This is Brixton man's involvement. This is Stratton man's involvement. This is, this is more than just one man's involvement. And furthermore, you like, ain't dealt with it properly. You understand what I'm saying? So everyone turned up at the hotels and orchestrated it in a certain way. But we didn't want to make it seem like it was some kidnapping thing or disrespecting in the end because we're still fans of them. We still like them. Yeah. They was acting like, um, Jules Santana was acting like he didn't really know what it was all about, it was all cam situation. It was on mind games, isn't it? Yeah, it was on mind games again. So they signed something, some bug little contract, like made them sign a bug contract and say, yeah, I'm going to come over here when I do my mixtape. And when he went back to the States, one of his little youths from, from jail was dissing the thing again. Fuck you, London niggas, da 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 da, da. <laughs> Mind games. All of that shit was happening. And I was like, but I was on the phone. I was, I was going out with a girl called Yaz at the time. Like, and I was on the phone from Cyprus, kind of just orchestrating it, saying, yo, put him on the phone. Yeah, nah, man, one's on the coach now, nah, Mega. Don't watch nothing. I'm air. Shabs, yo, Megs, what go on? Nah, man, I'm air, man. I'm on the coach, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Shabs is calling cool America. Certain man from America saying, what? Jack them niggas up, man. Jack them niggas up, you know what I mean? But I was like, nah, we're not going to do it that way, Shabs. Boom, 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 boom. Just know that we've managed the situation, you know what I mean? Mm. So I think, I think the next day they just kind of calmed it down a little bit, done a little freestyle with them online okay. and just calmed it down. It was meant to come back. So he didn't come back. And then, and then again, um, Cameron came over. But it's one of my brethren from my ends that was involved in booking it. But what was happening is that I wanted to make a phone call to say, yo, let's have a, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation with, um, with Cam and that just to let them know about the scenario. But I don't think Cam wanted to have the conversation. And it's not my brethren's fault. It's not, it's not the girl's fault. It's not, it's not my man's fault. It's just that the, the artist didn't, wasn't honest with them of the situation and wasn't honest with us about the situation. You know what I mean? So they was trying to play, they was trying to safeguard their interests at the same way, just safeguarding the artist's interests. But I was most probably seen as, as a disrespect on Cameron's side more than it was my brethren's. Yeah. You get me? I didn't think that my brethren's were disrespecting. They were just like, well, we just want to put on an event and boom, 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 boom. Mm. So it wasn't really nothing to do with them. They were just safeguarding their thing. But Cameron was taking a piss mm. because Cameron, yes, bless, yes, bless, man, bless. Yeah. Cameron was the main man. Next to, next to Big Joe, he was the main man. You get me? Mm. And I just said, look, if my man doesn't make the phone call, I apologize, but I have to, I have to um, pull him up on it. Mm. 
Oh, you get me? I can't, I can't allow these Brixton youths and these Streatham youths and a couple of my brethren who are involved to look at that and make it seem like I didn't have their interests at heart because this is my link. I made roadman put their money into something, mm. which, you know what I mean? Which yeah. they lost all their money. Losing a hundred grand of street money is not uh, some something that you should take mm -hmm. lightly. Mm -hmm. To anybody, it's not a joke thing. Gunshot, man. <laughs> so, for the whole time, it's been my interest to make sure that that justice is served on all areas. So I had to get dirty. I had to get my hands dirty a little bit again. You know what I mean? I turned up at the event on a, on a thing where, where I wanted to have a conversation with him again, and he just didn't want to turn up. So the young ones, they just moved reckless. And I said, look, if it gets to a point, if it gets to a point where they don't move accordingly, you lot do what you want to do. You know what I mean? And that's, that's basically how it was, man. But I'm, I'm always diplomatic right down to the last point, And I've always been like that. How do you feel about it now, the situation? Because obviously he still ain't run the paper, innit? I feel the same because the other day I got a phone call that um, Cameron and Jay the Kiss wanted to come over because they, they, they'd done a little tour in America. Okay. So I got a phone call respect to, respectfully from certain promoters, promoters and that. Yeah. And said, yo, what's the situation? Then I got on the phone with Cameron's manager and he, he let me know what the situation was and he was away at the time on, on an M charge and mm. they said throw out a number and I couldn't throw out a number because it was other man involved. So I made a phone call to other man. They gave me a number and when I went back and gave them the number, they said, boy, but like, can we deal with Cameron's side? I said, this isn't nothing to do with Cameron. We booked the whole of Dipset. So if you're the leader of your thing, just like our mega is the forefront of uh. the whole thing sits on me. Uh. So the whole thing sits on you, Cameron. You get me? You can't come here unless you want to agree, first of all, acknowledge that you owe that money and agree how that money's going to get paid. And I didn't hear back from them. So what, so what was meant to be Cameron and Jada Kiss turned into the locks. And that's when you saw Jada Kiss and Sheik come over and then start, but oh, Styles yeah, P did. didn't, yeah. So there's little things happening behind the sidelines, which I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not a bad boy, man. I fuck this bad boy thing. I'm just a person that stands on real morals. You get me? And if you tell me that we're going to do something, and if I say I'm going to be somebody by you, I'm going to be somebody by you. If I say I'm going to do this thing to the end, I'm going to do this thing to the end. Whether you disrespect me, whether you see me as an idiot, whether you want to try and chirp my gal, or whether you want to be disrespectful with money, if I say I'm going to be with you to the end, I'm going to be with you to the end. And that's just my principles, I don't care. So whatever, whatever fortune that I have in my life, that's most probably why I, I get through and still happen to create levels of bags and levels of opportunities because I'm more loyal than majority of the people I've come across. Huh. Ditto, ditto. But yeah, back to Soul Solid days, yeah? Yeah. Um, how did you feel when um, Ashraf went to jail for, this, for the machine? I felt, I felt kind of like... That was the first, that was the first, um, he was the first one, innit? Like, yeah. Where it turned Yeah, I felt a bit... I felt away, kind of, because the circumstance wasn't called for. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know what actually happened on the day. I don't know why the police warden even felt that he had something on him. He just didn't think, did he? I just don't think he was thinking, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what it was, really. Like, cos... As far as... As far as, um... Having it in his possession, that's understandable at the time because of the pressures of the streets and that. But just in the way in which he did, yeah, the way I, 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 I thought that as well, I thought, whoa. You know, like, because you, you got a machine on you and a, and a traffic warden or someone's chatting shit, you just be quiet. Yeah, it's a traffic warden, isn't it? No, so... you just be quiet because I got one machine, I'm just going to be quiet. But anyway, boom. So that was the first, that was, so, because obviously, there was other bits what came into it to then kind of, I, I wouldn't say break up so solid, but it kind of like panned it down a bit. And I, that's why I put that Asher going to jail as the first kind of catalyst. I don't know if that, I don't know if it was a different catalyst. All behind, I say is this, all I say team. is this, if we had the support of our community and the streets and everybody, mm. it wouldn't happen like that. Okay. Nothing would have happened like that. Because in this day and age, people are getting arrested for shooting, stabbings and all of that, and they're getting celebrated when they come out of jail. Mm. They're going back into their record deals. No one's dropping them from record deals. Mm. They're utilising that as a, as a big thing. 
You know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit different in this day and age. Mm. But it's like we didn't have the support. It's like, yeah, you take so solid down, you take the rest. Because, bro, we had, it was mad. It was so deep those times, bro. Like David Blunkett and Tony Blair, they sent out man to come and find me, and be a part of the Disarm Trust. Mm. And they, they had negotiations with them. Um, you know when Swiss said. Last time there was, there was meant to give a few meal. Last time I heard something, they ain't done it yet still. still. Mm. Because the disarm trust was me, Frank Warren, and certain man, where they said, we're going to give you lot millions mm. so that you can go to each area and present it to some of these gangsters. Let's go around, please. Go around. Go around. Go around. And present, and, and they said they was going to give a, they was, they was going to give a, they had a kitty of a few million, yeah? And they was going to, they wanted certain key people to go around and speak to certain gangsters in each area. Now, this is something that happened in America mm. with the Italians, with the Paddies, with the Irish, where to calm gangsterism, the government took some money, gave it to certain fractions of gangs and made them become legit businesses. And they wanted to do the same thing with our community. Yeah. So this it was called the Disarm Trust. Yeah. You lot stop the violence in certain areas because there's certain big... Can you see right along the River Thames on southwest London? Mm. All the glass buildings and all the apartments that go right up to Canary, right up to Canary Wharf. Mm. This is a big investment that was happening from since my times. <coughs> and when, what they saw is that a lot of men them were connecting from the streets because of the influence of Soul Solid and many other people. Mm. And they knew that if they could set up a disarm trust and fund certain of these gangs, then they would stop a lot of violence on the streets. So they sent certain men out to me. Even when certain men was getting nicked, they were walking out police stations, bro, in the UK. No further action. Mm. You was in, even involved in one of those cases, bro. Hmm. No further action. Yeah, no further action. You understand what I'm saying? Because in those times, like, and, and I'll tell you what, what, what the division was. The division was that the police didn't like that. Mm. Fucking giving these gangsters fucking air, what? We've got cases on them all, we're going for them now. So the government was like, unless you've got strong cases against them, we'll rather just give them this opportunity so that big investors could come, solidify their investments, put some money into, into London and continue going. They had to drop the crime rate and they had no control over what... It wasn't like they couldn't stop us from doing it because they, they all could. But, they, but it, because our level of gang violence was senseless, there was no, there was, there was no organisation to it. There was no order to it. No one was given the word, yeah, go and do it. So they couldn't pinpoint the head honcho. There was no, like, boss of South London. Everyone was their own boss. It was fucking each for their own. <laughs> so they had to work out a way to do it. So there was a battle between the disarmed trust, the government and the police at that time. And the police won. Mm. The police won in the end because no one got the money. The disarmed trust dismantled. You, did you hear anyone get any money? No one got any meals. No one got any meals from the government to set up, to set up these businesses as gangs. No one got it. But it happened in America, it happened in Ireland, happened in Scotland. But in England, it didn't happen here, bro. So what, what happened, what happened, um, cause obviously, like that's what I'm saying, it's, it's, it seemed like you lot kind of went quiet for a sec. I went Joe in it, I went Joe in 2004, yeah? And when I went jail, this is why like, it wasn't rocket science to kind of understand who was, a, who was the person holding it all together. No one, no one was managing Soul Solid well. No one would, no one would run the companies. G-Man wasn't the person that could. Did you could. go jail for? There was a murder case I went jail for. Yeah. You Obviously get me? I know, but I'm trying to do my journalistic stuff. I went jail for a murder case still. Yeah, yeah. But that was like some big hoax, man. Police corruption. You get me? People shooting at us. Yeah. And more of a situation where the police tried to make it sound like it was an enemy thing. Yeah. But it was on the Wandsworth Borough Territory. I knew everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody so was, was calm. Was, uh, um, and to tell the truth, we was, we was trying to leave that estate twice. You get me? I don't want to mention the name of the person and the family. Yeah. We was trying to leave that estate twice. And the first time a friend called us back, the second time the father called us back. I did hear the victim was found with a, with a 
machine. Yeah, the person who passed away yeah. had shot two firearms. Yeah, yeah, I told you that. You get me? But, um, like, he was shooting two firearms. Two of the witnesses that took the stand had firearms as well. They were known to be shooters as well on the day. Like, and there's another like, person who was pinpointed at the scene. He was, he was shooting and no one knows where he is. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So, my friend sitting in jail. Free up Morgan. Morgan sitting in jail on something that I didn't even witness happen. And forever, like, I don't even think, I think the family know who actually done the actual fatal shooting, mm. but they're still trying to just hold my brethren more accountable for it than the scenario that actually happened. Mm. And that's just my, my point of view of the whole thing. You get me? From how the case was to the evidence presented to forensics and all of that sort of stuff, it just kind of points from one direction. But Alhamdulillah, but looking at it now, because I think Morgzi got 30, innit? Yeah, 32. 30 years, 32 years, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's, that's sad. But bro, like, you got not guilty. Yeah. How does that make you feel sometimes, like, raw? Like, you've literally, don't you feel like raw? Like, boy, like, I'm chosen, not chosen, but I don't know. But you've literally skipped a um, life sentence. Well, at the end not of the day, you see what it is? Guilty, they were blaming the saying. whole thing on me. They were saying I was the one that gave the order. Mm. That's how they put it. You said burst him, you said this. Mm. And that were none of the case, you know what I mean? Like, even when I was in court, the family was like, what's Mega doing here? Mega didn't do nothing. Mega didn't shoot oh, anyone. So everyone knows each other. Everyone knows, the we family. all know each other. Okay, the family, okay, okay. everyone, we know each other, man. Mad, mad. Like, the cousins, all the cousins went to my school. Mad, mad, the younger mad. brother said, look, like, what's Mega doing here? Like, Mega didn't do anything. You know what I mean? And they mm. twisted up. There was a witness behind closed doors where they twisted up his statement. And he actually recorded his conversation with the police and brought it to the, to the table. Yeah. You get me? And when we presented that in court, that's what made me get bail, second okay. trial. And they still tried to put me down and maybe go through a whole third trial and go all the way to jury before getting How a not that guilty. Field all, bro? It was tense times, man. It was tense times, man. Shit Almost you. three years, three years out of my life trying to just be not calm what's and what's going on as well. Yeah, but I'm I had, I had George, George Carter Stevenson is a big QC man, very big QC, and we left no table unturned. And Byman and Partners, Michael Schwartz. Um, my family, who are lawyers as well, were very deeply involved in the case. Yeah. Left no stone unturned, from evidence to everything. If you looked in my cell, my cell was full of paperwork that I shouldn't have had. Mm. You know, un un uncensored and all of that, and censored and all of that. Mm. And, and like, Morgan, solic Morgan solicitors weren't really doing their job. Mm. If it wasn't for my side of the case, mm. Morgan wouldn't still have a chance to, you know what I mean, still revive his situation and that's what he's still going through right oh, now. Oh, is he still able to, um, still, still able fighting, to, yeah? Still able to cut through and, and battle his side of the one story. One thing I say with him is every time I speak to him, he's always in good spirits, still. Yeah, but because he knows, he yeah, knows, yeah. he knows his innocence, bro. He's always in Morgan is not that type of person, you understand what I'm saying? So, he knows what he deserves, he knows what he doesn't deserve and that, and that was way, way off board. Mm. You get me? Yeah, no. Nah. So how, how, was, how was that sentence? Not sentence, that remand. Remand is calm, bro. Must have been, nah, but bro, calm. You must have been... It was calm, bro. The stress of the case... No, I was stressed. But not, all... Stress of the case, yeah. but not jail. Yeah, but jail is jail, innit? Because you, you know what it jail. is? It's not your first You see, like, jail. when you're in jail, you always think you can get bail. You're putting up 250, you're putting up half a mil, people's putting up money, you're putting up money, people are putting up houses, you're putting up... You know what I mean? So it's like... You've always got that hope every like three to six months that you're going to get bail, that you're going to get bail. Yeah. So those are the little, you know, the carrot in front of the donkey mm. that kept man like, I'm going home soon anyway, I'm going home soon anyway, you know what I mean? Mm. But little knockbacks, man. But mm. Belmarsh was, bro, the way how we had Belmarsh, if anybody knew about Belmarsh, the way how we had it, it was so calm because there was a lot of even terrorists in jail as, jail as well. Time, yeah. So it was like, listen, no fights, no nothing. Abu Hamza. Everyone behaved themselves because... Everyone behaved themselves because we've all got proper cases. Mm. This, is, this is an ACAP prison. We need our association. We've got proper cases. And if everybody fights, we're all going to get banged up. Mm. So anyone that had rivalries, we just outcast them straight away, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, take them off this wing. You get me? And that's how it was. 
and then when you got that when you got that not not guilty, you finally mm -hmm. got um, that um, weight off your shoulders. What was your plan? What did you? Because I remember the um, cheats and thieves. Is that straight true? away, straight away, like I got another. I've done a TV show called The Jewelry. Mm. I think it was like 15, 2015 bags. And then they gave me another 250K mm. to do another album. Oh. To do another album. After you came out of jail? Yeah. Sick. And that's where I'd done the Since You Went Away single. Mm. Me, Lisa and Romeo. Yeah, come on. Same formula. I was writing that song before I went jail. I was writing it when I was in jail and actually done the tune when I came out of jail. Since you went away, mm. every... So that tune's like on a million views now. Mm. So I, single, like a solo type of thing. Done the album, but we never released the album. Never got to release the album. Why? It was a hedge fund that invested in it. And um, yeah, we just never got that far into releasing it, never man. Never released the North Star album, you know. I never signed you lot, though. I said, we never released it. Oh, you North never Star. released it? Yeah, we never released it. Yeah, you I never, yeah. I can't believe, you're thinking we wanted you to sign us. No, 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 but behave yourself, man. We didn't want you, we was cool. It's not we, shut up, we yeah, but shut we up. We signed to ourselves, you I get made me? you, like, we signed to bro, ourselves, you bro, get me? Bro, bro, Independent, bro. blood. Bro. North Star, independent. Let's get, let's get, let's get. They've heard about us. Let's get everything, let's get everything into perspective, yeah? I was encouraging C1 and Wes to be businessmen. I was encouraging them to make sure that they had their own and set up their own. Well, go on, G, you're good. Yeah, I was making sure that they wasn't under so solid, bro. They had that you lot had your. I was making sure you wasn't under so solid. You lot had your own identity, bro. You lot had your own setup. You get me? It wasn't about signing two man. So it was a lot being whatever, whatever you said. Bro. It's cool. You didn't want to sign. No, us, no, no. It was about you it's lot. It's fine. You didn't want See, to. See, now, now you're saying now you're it's fine. now you're switching the place. You didn't out. want to sign us, but it's fine. We did, we was cool. You know what it's about? It was about you lot being another version signed, of Soul Solid. He signed Cream Cartel. Yeah, do we sign? Yeah. What else did you sign? East Connection. Double East Connection. G2. G2. J2 Family. He gave Nicky Foot, um, Slim Ting. Yeah. And double out 100 bags. Yeah, yeah, 100K. yeah. 100k. Yeah. No star, nothing. It wasn't those times, man, different See, times. Makes, but you know what it is? We used to play it's CC1. Every it's time CC1. we used to play new tunes in a car. Let yeah. me tell you, let me tell you. And before it even gets to the bro, chorus, bro, it starts to. Bro, listen, listen. And me and C used to look at each other. Me and C used to look at each other like, can't this guy listen to it till the chorus? I swear, see when we used to play him new tunes? Yeah. We used to play him the new tune, yeah? Lick your lips, bro. Your lips are dry, bro. Yeah, Mad dry. Someone give him black some people. Vaseline, man. Black people. No, it's but not yeah, black people, because my listen, lips ain't dry like they yours. They are, you know. No, they're but not. Yeah, they're not, bro. They are, but they're they, not, they are not they catch it. Yeah, someone get, see that pink swear, Vaseline yeah. there? I swear. Give him that pink Vaseline, bro. Mama's has got big rolly and the listen, driest lips. Listen. Driest lips, listen. Sahara. Why for looking at my lips? Why for looking at my lips? No, nah, but we're talking. Why for looking at my lips? <laughs> right, Why for right, looking right, at yeah. my lips too much as well? Yeah, 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 if cream's yeah, not telling me. If it cream's not telling hey, me cream, that, why for that? Why for that? She, she's just wearing she because you always no, get onto her. Why for she that? She's just because you always get onto her. Why for that? Why for Oh, what's my lips? But yeah, every time we used to play a new tune, yeah? He used to start talking. He used to start talking before we got to the chorus. And me and C used to look at each other like... Why? Because we're, we're, we're why did, excited. Why did I always used to start talking? I don't know. We Tell didn't him. understand. No, no, we you know. know. Tell him, bro. We didn't know. Tell him why. We didn't know. But do you know now? We, no, I swear we didn't know. We but do you play, know now? We used to play bro, big junior. Do you know, know now? Like, Megs, listen to this. Do you know now? And then he used to like... Ask do you know to, now? No, do you know us, now? We're going to find out. Well, let me tell you something, fam. When you When any man goes into studio, and you're making tunes for the first time, if you're not the type of people that know how to make and finish a tune, man, them have to stop listening to themselves. <laughs> it's facts. Mind man, them, no, man, them stop listening to themselves, yeah? And actually bring unfinished music to the table and take advice from man of how to finish a song, bro. Mm. Because out of all the songs you lot mostly sent, man, there was most probably one or two songs that you actually went and done videos for, which, which made the cut. You weren't feeling it. You maybe, maybe I weren't feeling it. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe the subject matter oh, wasn't okay, entertaining right. for me. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? A bus man, two shots in there. I, maybe that subject matter weren't saying? feeling me. I don't, I can't, I can't remember, remember, bro. I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't even remember. I but you see remember. the one with Cassius? Big tune. Massive tune. Massive tune, fam. But like even that one you didn't even let get Nah, to I listened to that. I listened to that. Even that one he started nah, I listened to that fully, bro. Don't lie, don't lie. No, no, Listen no, to that fool, no, you're just no. acting. <laughs> but like I say, there's enough people out here that make songs, bro, that don't allow man them to hear their songs and actually say, change this, change that, fix that. You get me? Mm. Some man were stubborn. Some man weren't rappers, but wanted to be the biggest rapper in your crew. 
instead of like putting their time and effort into you. Mm. You get me? But Mind even putting their time and effort into you, you was mad dysfunctional at that time or just on badness that time where you was unpredictable, bro. And if your mannerisms and behaviors was a little bit more stable, blood, man then would have invested a lot more time into you, bro. Possibly. No, not possibly, probably, bro. Yeah, same thing, possibly. No, probably, probably bro. A star. Yeah, they would have they would have they would have done that. Mm. Fam, I was in I was in Ministry of Sound that day, remember? I don't remember what you're talking about. I was in you're Ministry of Sound mad. that day, you're remember? And the spotlight was on us, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Senseless, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying, bro, like, if you just knew how to control and I'm gonna to touch on another thing that cream that's been going viral for cream, yeah. Where like man that's just grown by their mothers. Emotional, impulsive, don't know how to control their feelings and their reactions. Mind and games. do things and do things. No, I'm telling you. More mind games. But it's facts, bro. It's facts. Fuck the mind games, it's facts, bro. If man knew how to, if man had a real male figure in their lives, bro, and actually tapped him with their dads, yeah, they would have known how to control themselves a little bit more, bro. You get me? Now there's people with male figures and dads that don't know how to control themselves. Yeah, but we're talking about, dads. but we're talking about majority. Bless, bro. Shit, that's we're talking about, I'm on camera, fam. Yeah, we're talking about majority, bro. We're talking you know about that's majority, enough, That's bro. another thing that we needed, that we spoke about as well. Because yeah. all right, it's cool, like two people, but it's about having a good dad. Just having a dad, yeah, just, yeah, having, yeah, a just dad having a dad isn't ain't good enough. Do you but you know what? There's, there's two things. The right dad. Right yeah, yes, of course, of some course. People have, some people have a father figure, but they, they, what are they doing? But how do you know you your dad's? How do you know whether you know your dad's good or bad? Your you dad, your dad might have been bad for your mother, you but good for that. you. Who are yeah, you to who are you to listen to your mother mm. and say whether your dad's a good dad or not? You're not listening to your mother. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Most of man, most man, and most kids that grew up with one side of the parents or other mm. are listening to their version of that parent's story mm -hmm. of who their father is. Yeah, yeah, and their story. father never even had a chance to be the father. So when it comes to time for them wanting to be the father, they might be off balance now. They might not be financially stable now. So they might not be somebody who you respect. They might, they might have been got far gone on crack. They might have 10 other kids now, Mind which you. they're focused on, bro. How much brothers do you have? A lot. Are they like by my you? Da, by my dad. Are they like you? None. None of them are like you. No one's like me on God's green. Exactly, bro. So understand understand the difference. Mm. Understand that it could be it could be a pro or it could be a con. Mm. But if they're nothing like you, bro, understand why. No, but I'm saying we've gone through the same thing. They've got no dad, I've got no brother, they're nothing like me. So look, the, you get what just I'm more, just more so, bro. Had the same more so, mom, like you know instead I mean? of just listening to one side of the story, They've had the same yeah. I just mom. find, I, I just find, put it this way, my moral of the story is, yeah, I just find that most people who are into badness and took up that bad boy route or that gangster route on the ground level, not, not, not Tony Montana's fucking boss, mm. not the real Godfather, not Al Pacino, his father or his grandfather. The most intelligent ones, yeah, were the ones that set up business, set up fractions, made sure there was an order of process and invested in proper businesses, companies and built foundational wealth from their gangsterism. There's men that are gunmen saying they're gangsters. You're not a gangster, you're a part of gangsterism. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You're a part of it. Same as the accountant who was doing all the books, he's a part of gangsterism. He might have had to get his hands dirty sometimes and bury a body but he's a part of gangsterism. He's not a gangster. Gunmen are not gangsters, bro. Gangster is the whole package. So what I'm trying to, what my whole thing is about, when you're, when, when you're a bad boy and all of that, it's based off of um, emotional imbalance. Mm. And the men them that actually run, most of the men them, you know yeah. I'll tell you bro. another thing. Most gangsters, of the men them, yeah. People just say something. They gangsters, just they just say gangsters, else. something gangsters, else. This, gangsters that, gangsters this, gangsters that. Bro, bro. Gangsters, you're not gangsters. Who, who unless invented you make, gangsterism? No, wait. You're not gangster unless you're making money. You're not gangster. No, it's not money. No, no. I'm just saying. People yeah. say all of this. They, everyone kind of brings a whole new thing to what a gangster is. No, no, no. Like, do you know what I mean? What? But as far as man know, yeah. or when man was watching the films or whatever, man know what a gang. Or well, do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so when you watch when you was watching the film, the gunman's the gangster. Yeah. No, it's not. That, no, but that's, no, it yeah, wasn't. Scarface, no, it wasn't. All gangsters. Scarface. All no, it wasn't, bro. Them, no, it wasn't, bro. But that's what no, I it wasn't. No, the that's whole movie was gangster. That's he was a gunman and a drug dealer. No, but in my the brain, gangster was the, was the one that came and whacked him at the end and wasn't even on the scene. Mm. 
That's who you think. They're Let me gangsters. say something. They're all gangsters. When we look at Arden, Arden, put it this way. Life. What about the government? Gangster what about the government? Just... What about the government? What, what about it? Is the government gangster? No. The UK government? They're not gangster? No. Is it? Not to me. Like, that's not my idea They're of They're not gangster. gangster. Most, not businessmen, idea. most businessmen that, 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 um, that, that, encourage wars and then go and invest in those territories after the saying. wars, not they're not gangster. gangster. What? The banks ain't gangster? No. That's what I'm saying. I that's do not understand. No, but that's what I mean. That's what I mean. People do. It could be gangster. You know what? As a black, as a black person, yeah, as, as, a, as the black culture, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we didn't invent gangsterism. So yeah, we can't Italian. determine what gangster is or not. Go and speak to the man that invented it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'll tell you what gangster is. Apart from that, blood, when we're watching all of these gangster films, the mafias and all of that, bro, the people who are the real gangsters are the ones that manners the people who are on the lower level and still continue to do business and still continue to accumulate foundational wealth and governments had to bow to them. Police had to bow to them, had to submit. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. All the gunmen on the low levels, they went jails, they got birded. You understand know, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, all I'm, all the, the most thing I'm saying about it and what I really, really want to understand is that when we left our house as youths, or when we watch some of these movies, what are we watching these movies for and what are we entertained by? We're not meant to be entertained by um, people that are irrational. No, and you know what gangster is? A member of a gang of violent criminals. That's literally what a gangster is. Literally. A member of yeah, a violent criminal. But that's my whole point. But, that's, but everyone that's says what, something else. That's what, that's what gangster, gangster means. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, cool. it's star. You get what I'm saying? But I get it. Because everyone that's like, what you yeah, think. you're not, no, it's not, that's just what, that's what I know. That's what, what Google told that's you. That's what I know, no, that's what I know. Do you get what I'm saying? I know what a gangster is or what the term gangster. What does gangsterism mean? Gangsterism, I'll have to tell you. Yeah, type that in, man. So, yeah, look, all I, all I say is that before we became involved in all of this street shit, yeah, we listened to our parents, yeah. we looked on what we had and what we didn't have, and we said we're going to fix that or we're going to change that, or we're going to better that. And when we left our house, basically, you know what I mean? a, culture, a, a culture of belonging to organised gangs of criminals. Yeah. Now, when you say organised, yeah? Yeah, yeah? There's nothing organised about what we was doing, bro. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, when we're looking at organised um, gangsterism, there's, there, there's a mission, there's a goal. So basically, when we left our houses and we went onto the streets and we done whatever we done, all, we, all it is that we got caught up in in so many other things than the actual real reason why we left out the house. Take care of mummy, make sure she's got a good life and all of that, you know what I mean? And then we ended up making the man them grow, grow us and man them's into us being more loyal and spending more money on our friends and our gal than we did at our homes with our parents and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? We lost sight of our mission. So the reason why I continue to wanting to be and do what I want to do, bro, is for that same reason, is not letting go of that real reason. Exactly. Not letting go of the real mission of why I really wanted to get involved in it. And today, brother, I fucking hate it. I hate that I even took that, took that route. I was picking up a reputation that I shouldn't have had. I was building hate based off you lot not taking care of yourself or not moving right or not thinking forward. And then, and in this day and age, you don't want to utilize that against people who you've put in that position to make them seem like, boy, they're the bad ones, I'm the cool guy. You was always the cool guy and I was the cool guy. Yeah, exactly. But I had to become somebody else to take care of your interests. Why? Today, none of my friends are, are dead. None of my friends are stabbed up and shot up. You know what I mean? I can look around and say from my junction era to chaos, to, to Dean White, to Darren, to to Fly, to Ghost, to Mac. None of my brethren died in the game. My Soul Cellar crew members, none of them have died in the game, bro. I haven't had to RIP my friends. So we've done some sort of good job up to this point. Now, another thing which enough people feel like, what are your friends doing now? I mean, if I make you money, or I make you money, or I make you money, ask your family what they're doing now. Your family's meant to be responsible for what you get up to when you get your finances. Yeah, yeah. What you do with your finances, your mum, your dad, your closest brother, your sister, it's not down to your friends on the streets, mm -hmm. whether you're still making money or not. Mm -hmm. It's down to your family. And if you don't have a family, then yeah, it might be down to a couple of your friends in your circle. But don't be holding that against like 
your next bridging and your next bridging and your next bridging. Your next bridging gave you the opportunity so that you can take it home and then develop something better with your family. You know what I mean? So there's enough little things that we kind of draw smoke and mirrors about like, yeah, that's your friend, man, but what are you doing for him now? You're making money, but he's not, or this person is, and he's... Listen, man, you give people the opportunity, man, and it's down to their family and their mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters to help them accumulate more from that foundational base. You get me? And some people, you know, go left and some people take it up and go right. What's your best memories? My best memories? Yeah. Like Taking the, care like, of people, man. No, no, that in it. Do you know what, yeah? And I was thinking as well, we didn't even talk about, like, when did you have your, your youth? That, in the time of... 15, 16? Is it? Mm. <laughs> well, my, my son was born when I was 16. Cause that's what, that's a big issue. Yeah, how was that? My son was born when I was 16, bro. No, but I was that, like, fatherhood so young, like, that's a big response. I was young, man, just didn't... You, you did, it didn't... Connect. Didn't handle it well. I connected, of course I connected. No, I'm saying, did it connect with you, like, rah, I'm a dad? Not like I'm a dad. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it connected with me, like, yeah, i got a son, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm going to give him what he wants and all of that. Mm. My son was spoilt, man. And you look at my son when he was young, he was spoilt. Like, he had everything he wanted, he was in all the videos. He might not have liked being on set all the time and all of that, but he had all the computer games, DVDs, TV in his room, all of that. He had everything. Mm. His dad picked him up from school certain times when I could, and he had all of that. So. And he's here now. So. Yeah, my boy is here now, that's bro. That's testament to father, good fatherhood. Exactly. Yeah, but, still um, about. That's one of the main things as a man that we should man up to mm. and understand. Like you're having sexual intercourse with your woman. She's growing life inside of her and you don't even know how to help her give birth. You know what I mean? In the comfort of your own home. And I, I ain't directly saying help her give birth, but my last two kids, they were born in water birth. Okay. You know what I mean? What's that? How's, how's that? That home where they bring the... They bring the whole inflatable thing home. Mm. And not only that, just knowing... Just showing a woman or showing each other how to nourish yourself while you're going through that process. Mm. And the calmness of how to be and all of that. And at this age, how, I've, how I think, if I've got a woman, my woman's not working, my woman can't have a nine to five job. Mm. Anything that she feels she wants to set up, you set that up tomorrow, you have a business straight away, you know what I mean? Mm. And just work and just, you can relax because you don't have to depend on a business to facilitate your income because a person like me should be able to help you balance that. But after a while, like, you got a, like, you should be able to grow your, you know what I mean, your situation to kind of be independent enough that even if your man falls off, you can hold up your man. And if you fall off, your man can hold you up. It's not just a one-way thing, you know what I mean? It's balanced because it's a different society in this day and age. But if you want to be a traditional woman and you want to just be the birth giver and, you know what I mean, the home nurturer and all of that sort of stuff, you got to cover all of those bases there. And if you cover all of those bases, then a man should be able to cover everything else. You know what I mean? But if a woman doesn't know those fundamentals, then boy, something has to give. So I'm just on that. I'm on a different vibe over the past, like, ten, six years. I've been on a whole different different vibe, bro. Cheats and thieves. Yeah. You ain't spoke about that. Cheats and thieves, man. Good clothing line, man. It was, it was, based, it was based off, like, the Robin Hood theory. Mm. You know you what I mean? What was the name? My business partner. Okay, okay, okay. Business partner thought of the name. But it's just like that cheek and tongue sort of thing, man. And it's just more of like, give decent quality goods for, for an affordable price. Is it still happening? Yeah, of course, bro. Like, there's and two... We ain't, we ain't been sent nothing. You see in the clothing game... We haven't been sent anything. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I should. My business partner's been a bit... He hasn't understood the game. Because okay. early times I had Dua Lipa, modelling for us, you know what I mean? I've had the Krepton Cone and Chip, all of them modelling for us. And at the time when I had them modelling for us, he wasn't, he didn't actually see their potential, which is where I could always see people's potential. So it was a little bit standoffish at the time when I brought them to the table and maybe not too forthcoming in taking care of their interests to the, to the best level that, that we could have. But Cheats and Fees, man, we, we, we've got good relationship with buyers, man, mm. from Zalandu to ASOS to many other retail companies. So regardless of whether we're selling on our site or not, 
quarterly we always get the big checks, man. And we have a printing um, facility where we print for a lot of other brands as well. So what's happening? What's happening with Mega Man now? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mega. man still see out there performing. You know what? I just man don't... still see man on stage. Yeah. Like Cream said, the garage thing is still going strong. Mm. Like I, I go for major investments, bro. Mm. I go for multi-million pounds investments all the time, man. And if it's not that level, I just don't want to play with the game. You know what I mean? Like. The entertainment scene can only offer a certain amount, mm. but there's an other side of the entertainment scene that just have endless funds where I just create a brand, go and do a concert, go and do a whole string of shows. Mm. And I'm the type of person where I always think to myself, it's not about having the money. I understand what business is. There's, there's wealthy people that don't even want people to know that they have money. You understand what I'm saying? They're trying to get rid of money. They're trying to invest every second of the day. So me, I just create ideas, bring it to the table of my investors, get the bag and just keep it, <laughs> just keep it pushing. And that's all I want to do. I don't want to be committed to a contract where I've got a time to deliver or nothing. Mm. I just create the idea, deliver the plan. You know what I mean? And we all eat, man. That's basically my plan. I'm going to run you through a quick fire round, yeah? Obviously we're doing it different. So we're not really doing current affairs and all that, but just true. Before we even do that, yeah? Mm. Sometimes you always got to big up people that ain't with us with us. I always big no, up no, my family. No, no, we're going to do that at the end. Going to do that at the Come end. Come on, man. You know, we got R.I.P.s and Freeze. We've got that. All right. Boom. Two-pack or Biggie? Biggie. Biggie. Jay-Z or Nas? Jay-Z. Drake or Kanye? I would say Drake. Snoop Dogg or Nipsey Hussle? Snoop. 50 Cent or Game? 50. Joel Santana or Jim Jones? As a rapper or just personality? Rapper. I kind of, I kind of stirring towards Jim Jones these days, you know. Cameron or Mace? Rapper. Definitely Mace. Mace in his early times. Cameron in these times. P Diddy or Shook Knight? Diddy, obviously. Why for Diddy? Chief Keef <laughs> or Bobby Smurda? Yeah, he's the biggest why on earth. Chief Keef or Bobby Smurda? Bobby Smurda. Can't, don't pick this in my match. Smurred over Chiefs Keith, yeah? NBA Young Boy or Lil Dirt? NBA Young Boy. Bro, mm. Megs is different, you know. You see, everyone that picks Young Boy, they're different, like, he's got a different, like, um. Different team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, alright, cool. Boom. Mob Deep or CNN? I don't know who CNN is, bro. Capone and Noriego, back in the day. I, I'll go for mob, I'll go for mob. D-Block or Dipset? I can't believe you didn't know see What? D-Block? Obviously. 50... Oh, I don't know. Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? Whitney. Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? Nicki. Beyonce or Shanti? Beyonce. Rihanna or J-Lo? Rihanna. Maya or Ciara? Maya. Lil' Kim or Foxy Brown? Ooh. <laughs> Little Kim. Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor. <laughs> See, I told my Richard's funny. Everyone picked Eddie, Eddie. Kevin Hart or Dave Chappelle? Kevin Hart's more funnier to me. Eddie Griffin or Jamie Foxx? Griffin. Chris Rocks or Chris Tucker? Tucker. Bernie Mac or Cat Williams? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how do you put it's those two? One. That's two different errors, bro. You yeah, can't but, do that. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's, yeah, no, but you can't on, do that, Bernie bro. Bernie Mac or Cat Williams. I'm going for on. Bernie Mac then. Yeah, come on, man. You can't style Bernie. You can't Bernie. put two different you errors, can't man. Style Bernie, though. You can't style Bernie, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, but Bernie, the madman. Mo Gilligan or Steve O, the madman. Can't leave right Mo. Man, man, get me. Dizzle but I like Steve O as well. Dizzle Comedian or Wayardi? White Yardy. Dizzle's funny though. John Singleton or Spike Lee? Singleton. Maya Jammer or Lisa Dixon? Nah, Spike Lee, sorry, Spike Lee, Spike Lee. Right. Maya Jammer or Lisa Dixon? Yeah. Fam, why do, why do you keep putting two different, two different errors? Just, that's that's two different errors cool though. It. Everyone else is cool with it. It depends what. Maya Jammer's cool for it's these times, but Alicia Dixon is still cool as well. Because Alicia Dixon, Alicia Dixon's on. Pick. 
is like Laisha Dixon's the, the home girl, man. Yeah, 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 I'm with Maya still, but Steph London or Miss Bugs. See, why are you doing that, man? Miss same. Banks is like my Aries. You get me? What are you talking about? Bro. All right. If you're saying like... Stature, you would say Steph. But if you're saying like lyrical content, Miss Banks. I'm saying Steph. Tim Westwood or Charlie Sloth? <coughs> Sloth. Blade Brown or Dubs? Brown. Jay Spades or Fecky? That's a hard one, you know. JP, I ain't thought of that. I would say Fecky, but but Pot of Paper. Brown, Pot of Paper or Rimsy. J Space is good, huh? Pot of Paper or Rimsy. Rimsy. Snap Capone or Scraps. Are you scratch, bro? Scraps, man. CSB. Oh scraps. Oh, you said scraps. Snap for Capone or Scraps? Yeah. I like both, man, but definitely scraps, man. K Trap or Freddo? Uh I like K-Trap as well, you know. He's kind of hard still. But Fredo's, Fredo is an all-round package, man. Fredo kind of tips the... Business. Central yeah. C or Digga D? Yeah, that's too easy, bro. Central. Going Central? Yeah. J Huss or Dave? <laughs> Don't know why you do that. What was your, what's your answer? Um, J Huss. Dave. I'm with Juju J. I'm oh, Dizzy, such I'm a with... pagan. Man said, what's your answer? I told him my answer, he went with the other one. Yeah, I'm Man Dave. Said Dave. But um, Jay Huss is bad, though. Yes, yes. Mix, bad. Mix Money or Bugsy Malone? <laughs> Mix Money. Mist or Millions? Huh? Mist or Millions? Mist. Storms but Millions chip. is bad as well, fam. Stop doing this shit, bro. Storms You're just chip. making me breed more haters, fam. No, no, no. Wait, like they, the man, they, this then. is what we do all day. Look, what? What your preference? Storms your chip. Storms your chip. Storms you obviously. What Gets or D double. Huh? Gets or D double. But chip is bad though. Gets or D double. Gets like lyrically, yeah. Kano or, or dogs? Dirty dogs. Kano. Bashy or crazy titch? Bashy. Frisco or P money. Frisco's last project's cut true, you know. Mad, 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 mad. Yeah, Frisco kind of, kind of topping it right now. Prez T or Footsie? President T or Footsie? I haven't heard any of them recently, you know. I can't say. Heartless crew or pay as you go? Heartless. Wiley or Dizzy Rascal? Wiley. Skept or Jamie? Both. Kelly LaRocco show like Amar. <laughs> but show like Amar, yeah, mm. has like two songs, right? Kelly LaRocco show like Amar. Both. Yeah, you know you got to say both. Yeah, yeah you, that's what I mean. He's a madman. <laughs> even thinking he could even. Adele or Amy Winehouse? Adele. Oh, you're with Adele, yeah? Yeah, of course. I thought you'd be with Amy for some nah, reason. Nah, nah, nah. Just for the error. See when it comes to nah, the... just for the error. Nah, see when it comes to the coke thing, I don't, I don't rate nah, it, Nah, she's bro. a B cat. She's a B cat. Yeah. That's even worse. Mad. Anyone on any form of white drugs, crack, coke, heroin... She, and she told, she said, no, no, and she weren't going rehab, you know? Yeah, no, I know, but it's Jungle mad. Jungle or garage? Uh, garage, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. garage. House or gram? House. R&B or hip hop? R&B. Sizzle or K-Putton? Caper. Rotted. It's only one more person picked Caper, I can't remember. Half the mill from Jamaica yeah, gonna for a banto. Preaching, teaching, no, what are you could, talking we could, about? We could draw for scissors, track. Come we'll be here till Jordan. Yeah, we'll be here. Yeah, Barry that. Salmon or Sanchez? Sanchez. You only take, taking Sanchez as well. No, only only because Barry sang that song, hey, man. Girl, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone. Keeps only saying. because of that one song, man, and, and I, I haven't been able to put it into perspective yet. <laughs> yeah. So. Mad Cobra or Supercat? Supercat, man. Ninja man or merciless? Ninja man, you but... Shabba, Shabba or Buju? Buju. Bounty killer or beanie man? Beanie. Vibes, Carter or Movado? Vibes. Idonia or Busy Sigma? Idonia. Popcorn or Alkaline? Popcorn. Massacre or Skilly Bang? Skilly Bang, no way. Come massacre, on. man. Has to be Massacre. Has to be Massacre. Skeng or Valiant? See Swiss there? Skeng or Valiant? Um, 
I don't know these two, bro. Yeah, Valiant. Dex Adapts or Intense? I don't know them. TJ or Shane or? You don't know. I do know Dex Adapts still, Dex Adapts, yeah. Football or basketball? Football. McDonald's or Burger King? None. Pizza Hut or Domino's? None. KFC or Morley's? None. Coke or Pepsi? None. <laughs> I don't no, drink none of those. Cool. I don't drink none of those things, bro. Fan or tango? No. None. I don't drink none of those, bro. Orange or apple juice? Apple juice. Carrot cake or chocolate cake? Carrot cake. Chinese cake. or Indian? None. None. Italian or Turkish? None. none. Rice and peas or jollof? <laughs> none. I don't eat rice. Oh, you bro. don't eat rice and peas? Yeah. When you used to, when you used to eat, mm. what was it, rice and peas or jollof? When I used to eat rice, I, I didn't even taste jollof, so I wouldn't okay, know. Okay, okay. Bro. Fish and chips or pie and mash? You eat fish and eat. It's gonna be fish and chips. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Car or bike? Car. BMW or Mercedes? I don't like none of those cars. Audi or Volkswagen? Audi. Lamborghini or Bugatti? I would say Lambo. Ferrari or Bentley? Bentley. Jeep or Coupe? Jeep. England or America? England. Fury or Yusuf? Fury. Joshua or Wilder? Wilder. Haney or <laughs> Haney or Shaker? I said Wilder, but I know Josh. Josh is the big man of the UK still. So Haney or Shakur Stevenson? Shaq. I don't know about those two. Spence or Boots? Oh, you don't know about boxing? Who? Nah, Boots. not much about boxing. Do, 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 do. JD's or Foot Asylum? None. Tyson in his prime or Ali in his prime? Tyson in his prime. Jordans or Air Maxes? I don't wear none. Nike or Adidas? Don't wear none. Puma or New Balance? I wear New Balance. Gucci or like Louis? Puma, yeah, Puma's cool. Huh? Gucci or Louis? I don't wear none of those. Fendi or Dior? Don't wear none of those. Versace or Mosh? Don't wear none of those. I'm gonna... Inside or outside? Outside, G. Look. Galting, Can't Galting. you see we're outside, yeah, come G? on, Galting. Restaurant or cinema? Restaurant. Looks or personality? Personality. Natural or surgery? Natural. Bad girl or good girl? Good girl. Party girl or home girl? Home girl. Black girl or white girl? Both. Girl's breast or girl's bum? None. I don't care about bum or breast, bro. That's just sad. It's personality. I have to laugh. I have to laugh. I, if I her, say on person top, her on top of missionary. No, no, because that's a question I normally get people on. Her on top of missionary. Depends, man. It depends how the body set, man. Doggy star or reverse cowgirl? It depends how the body six set, bro. Six toys or no six toys? No six toys. To bow or not to bow? I don't bow. So. Money or love? What do you mean? With who? Money or love, just in general. Straight money, money bro. Because I'm on it, paper, bro. Oh, Fuck that. Career of your dreams or the love of your life? Career of my dreams, and See, then I'll get jail, the love yeah. of my life. In jail, do you rather pool or table tennis? I do. I play pool, though. Yeah, I'm table tennis. Football or weightlifting? In jail? Yeah. I was football. Association or gymnasium? Association. Exercise or shower? <laughs> is that a trick question? No, again? no, it's a trick, but bro. How I've... can you be exercising and not have a shower anyway? You go in the exercise yard, you're you, still you... going to get your shower. No, you don't. You do... exercise shower in your jail. Go in your jail, bro. Jail. Exercise is exercise. In the exercise yard, there's Fam, no there's no or, or. There's no, no, but that's, no but that's the there's choice. There's no or no, in jail. No, but that's the choice. You've got choice. You don't, they don't no, give you I'm that choice you in jail. Choice. No, but I'm giving you You're not a governor, bro. I'm giving you Are you a governor? Are you a screw? I've had that choice before. You're gone mad. I've been down block and they've given me the choice. Either I've got my shower or my exercise. You've down block, yeah. Yes, bro. I don't go block. I don't go block. I've had that choice. No, but I'm saying, which one would you pick? I have exercise or shower. Well, if I already had a shower, I'm going on exercise. <laughs> I'm, I'm cleaning myself for the shower. Anyway. Well, I could clean myself in my sink. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the yard, what, straight that's yard, what, that's blood. That's what next man said, but yeah, I'm... Yeah, I clean yeah. myself in my sink, blood. Yeah, that's mad thing. Um, canteen day or visits day? Oh, I hate this interview, man. Canteen it's day mad. or visits day? Um, visits. I'm take, why do you hate it? Huh? Why do you hate the interview? Because I know it's just long. Why? Go on, Frank. Carry no, why on. Do you hate it? I don't hate it. I'm lying. No, but I'm saying, why did you I'm, say that? Let, I'm lying, bro. Go on, carry on. What, because of this? No, because of the firearm? Yeah, this fucking firearm, lad. <laughs> why? Go on, bro. Finish. Why? Because you're picking people over people? No. Oh, it's, it's nearly finished, bro. Um, did you pick canteen day or visits? Visits. I'm canteen. <laughs> I'm canteen. Jim Audley, your number one server. My cell was, was like a sweet shop anyway, blood, so I just do visits anyway, blood. Jim Audley, your number one server. Jim Orderly on number one surgery. Like if you had the job, which job? Yeah, you? I would have want to stitch up, man. Still, nah. I'll take Jim Orderly. Church or mosque? <coughs> 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 mosque. 
<coughs> two, two no mackerel. <coughs> two no mackerel. Both. <coughs> Custard creams or bourbon? None. Ritz or Jaffa cakes? None. Walkers or Golden Wonder? Walkers. Cheese and onion or prawn pussy tail? Cheese and onion? Yeah. <coughs> prawn pussy tail? None. Ready sorted or salt and vinegar? Ready sorted. Snickers or Mars? <coughs> None. Double or single banger? What do you mean double or single? Double or single banger. What does that mean? Do you want a cellmate? You rather have a cellmate single. or just sing? Yeah. You saw what happened when Barry said double, I was gone. I ended the show. <laughs> I ended the show for that car. I didn't understand why you... Has why to be you, single. I didn't understand why you'd rather have yeah. a cellmate. But yeah, boom. Um, all right, cool. Morley's or Maria's? Maria's. Look Maria's is there, fam. <laughs> Look here, I'm asking you. Morley's or Maria's? How you know about Maria's? Morley's or Maria's? Which one do How you know, you know about Maria's? Well, obviously, this is your... This is your bit of the fire right now, like, so it's going to be around, about around here. Maria's, because Maria's is halal and I don't eat no meat from there. Tickle me or jam dish? None. Well, jam dish, jam dish, jam dish. Um, Club 2000 or Providence? <laughs> Club 2000. Divas or Catherine Law? Catherine Law. <laughs> York Gardens or Battersea Park? Imagine wearing York Gardens now. Battersea Park, though. Ah, oh, is it? Yeah, Battersea Park's the biggest. We got Swiss. Swiss gave me them yeah. them questions, but yeah, boom, that was a sit still. But look, he hates them. He don't like the interview. <laughs> that's it. I can't believe. Now you, you know like what it is, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. Sometimes when you go on a podcast, yeah, you really want to talk sensible. No, but wanna, I would rather have been. You want to have certain conversations, but mm. with spray. You can't have a conversation without touching on streets, yeah. road, yeah. gangster, this, life. that. I'm, I'm asking you about your life. You can't. It's not about me. I'm asking you about you. You can't tell me what it's like. I'm asking you about you. You're like, going to be the person that's going to make them. me stop doing, doing interviews. Ask you everybody know? about them. I swear. You're going to be the person that's going to make me stop doing interviews. It's your life. It's your life. It's your life. It's going to be the last interview I've done. <laughs> I do. In, in how many years, unless it's your life. unless they're paying six figures and they're no more podcasts, bro. But anyway, R.I.P. to Fruge. Yeah, R.I.P. to Veli. R.I.P. to Terms. Who else is there? There's a couple other men still. Gonna free up anyone? Well, obviously, free up Morgan, Chaos. Come on. Tons of man. My brother Reeps. Reeps still in jail? I was wondering why he's got in here, though. Reeps soon land, man. You get me? Mad man. Southside brothers are the craziest. <laughs> hey, you got a big up Tanner, you know. Yeah, Trust me. Tana. But anyway, yeah. And yeah, my family members that's passed away, my cousin Philip, grandparents, all my grandparents have passed away. You get me? Yeah, I'm ready to go on. My uncle Vaughan, uncle, the uncle CJ, left. uncle Selwyn, and all my other cousins has passed away. You get me? But yeah, RIP them. RIP, rest in power. You're done now. Free up everyone who needs to get freed up. You get me? Um, yeah, man's gonna go and eat some chicken and that. Some more chicken. If there's any that. left, no, we're gonna enough, obviously man. go and get some cutaways of everything else. But yeah, now big up, man, because the lighting's going anyway. Follow the Queen. But listen, welcome to Junction. You get me? I got the Queen here. Come on. What are you saying, Cream? Good job, man. I'm glad that we've done this. It was a good little sit down. Do you get me? Yeah, nah. Trust me. If only they had your mic and, and a more comfortable seat. No, it's all right. Yeah, I made it work, though. But you know what? We have to try, we have to try different things, innit? We have to try different things as well. Work.